Hello, I am Daniel Bloodworth. We are Easy Allies, and this is the Easy Allies podcast. This week, I am joined by Isla Hink. Hi. <laughs> Michael Huber. He's beginning to believe. <laughs> He's beginning to gun brell. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Damihani. The Matrix has you, Neo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. And making it all happen in the control room, we've got Don Casanova. Hello. And Gabby, <laughs> back there watching us. You don't remember that line from The Matrix, Isla? <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa. I do. It's on the, it's on the monitor right before Hello, it says Morpheus. The Matrix has you. Yeah. <laughs> it says knock, knock, Neo. Uh, friends, we are here to talk about what's new, what's news, and what we've been playing uh, Did week. you come up with that, Blood? That's my favorite yeah. thing, by That's the really way. That's really good. That's my number one. <laughs> that is like as good or better than anything Bossman ever did yeah. or said yeah. on the podcast. Yeah, probably true. Like, he would be jealous of that. Yeah. Okay. Like, 85% of everything he <laughs> yeah. did, right? Sure. 85% of what Bossman did on this podcast was a 10 out of 10. <laughs> yep. And then the other 50%. But the other 50% was, was a 4. <laughs> Or whatever the fuck it was you were saying. <laughs> You've insane humor, Matt. Uh, this week we got a new look at Star Wars Outlaws mm -hmm. uh, oh, and some more uh, news and impressions from that. Uh, there's a whole lot of uh, cool stuff shown at the Triple I Initiative, aye, aye, aye. Uh, including that rumored Prince of Persia roguelike. Uh, yeah. So we'll Darkest Dungeon Blood Wars. Yes, we got that too. Isla's been playing Children of the Sun. I have. Uh, Huber's put a little bit of time into Savior List. Just a sample. But more importantly, we finally got him. <laughs> Bellatro, dude! Bellatro. Hubie! Or oh. Balatro, according to the trailer. What? I know, you sent what? me that trailer and I was like, wait a sec. What? Yeah. I'm getting wowed on the horn. Yeah. Yeah. Balatro. Ba Balatro. That's a Mario shit yeah. right there. I like yeah. Bellatro. It Bellatro. just sounds better. Yeah, looking it up, it seemed like Bellatro seems like it should be fine. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Balatro. Yeah, I don't like it as much. <laughs> if, if people pronounced that Balatro, it would have gotten 10% fewer sales. I agree. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. 100%. <laughs> I believe it. Uh, so yeah, let's roll ahead and uh, roll that uh, I Star would, Wars. I'd score it lower. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if I found Knock out. Knock it down a point. Yeah. Balatro? Yeah. Get out of town. <laughs> uh, so Star Wars Outlaws is uh, launching August 30th. Big, yes. That's the biggest news. We have a date. Yeah. August this. 30th. Yes. Uh, wow. All right. The second half game. Yeah. And uh, this Finally. is a yeah. Ubisoft Star Wars game from Massive. Massive, baby. Makers the, of the Division. To me... Right now, it used to be Ubisoft Montreal was the A team. Okay. And then maybe like Ubisoft Quebec was right there. Massive, massive to me is A plus mm -hmm. for sure. What do you think of this trailer, Huber? I liked it. Um, I liked it. I, I like all of the characters though, except the main character. Oh, okay. I'm not super sold on her yet. Why not? Uh, she, it just, she's got like the, a little bit of the Marvel quirk. Mm. Just kind of like the the scoundrel character, just just the classic archetype. I mean, that, in Star Wars, scoundrel is the archetype yeah, she's playing. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I need I need a little bit more of her, but I I, I I'm excited. I guess too because I really like the huts and like the criminal element. So the, like all the other characters looked like really really awesome. The aliens look phenomenal. They do. Yeah. And, and, and I my, think that my, makes it hard for any human character. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. my main man, Job, is there. Yeah. So hyped uh, just to do missions for the huts. <laughs> I was going to uh, say, like, the quality of her model looks lower than... The, but then you're right. Like, she's competing with with things that can just have glossy textures and, mm -hmm. like, that are just be look better. Yeah. Right. And it uh, was... Some of this... Yeah, the, this shot here, too, with the jumping over the roof was, like, a little weird and stiff looking like yeah. it didn't connect fully mm -hmm. but i know we've seen just that like gameplay this. demo before was better yeah but her in the ship i think looks a lot better than some of the other shots so like yeah. i think some of the some of what people were pointing out is like some of this stuff is like lighting issues it's yeah like she's in weird lighting sometimes and the trailer was doing a lot of heavy lifting on the whole cast and the whole premise and so much other stuff mm -hmm. where it's like, yeah, she's the main character, but also in this trailer, it didn't like fully go into her and what she's all about. So I need to, I need to like, you know, dive into that. Obviously, when the I game also comes wonder out, if you can customize her hair and her outfits and stuff, and that might that could be part be. of why like lighting hits her a little different because mm. it's like I think you can do her outfit. 
I don't know about her hair for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm. Jedi um, Survivor got, got us all spoiled. Yeah, right. Cal Kestis. <laughs> poncho, no Oh yeah, poncho. he has a he has a ton of different hairstyles and stuff. Yeah, right? and yeah. like the facial beard, hair too. no beard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I am excited. We are coming off of some excellent Star Wars games as of late. Uh, some pretty good shows as well. Like Star Wars is, I feel like, kind of on the rise a little bit again. Post uh, Palpatine somehow returning. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a and, low, yeah. And I love the premise because I always love the, as I said, I'm, I love Job of the Hutt. I love the criminal organized crime like underbelly side of star wars the most yeah like the imperials and the rebels and the jedis i like way less than the cartels uh so i'm excited just for the basic premise and then i just love what massive has done division two is incredible i love the division two and they supported that game for so long uh, it's just it was so, it was like my most played game that year when it came out. I put like 200 hours in the Division Two. I didn't even know how I did it. It was just so addicting, and, and the the gameplay loop was so fun. Uh, and then of course Don will speak to Avatar. You know they're coming off of of Avatar, so I think they're they're primed right now with licensed games yeah. and uh, open world games as well. Yeah, I, I'm mostly looking forward to just getting out and exploring that yeah. world yeah. And, and zooming around and going through cities and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the things that they brought up with this, um, basically the setup is that like there's this one uh, crime boss named like Slero. Weird like, name, yeah. What a Star Wars it's name. Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> and so you're trying to like form the alliances with these cartels so you can basically like, it sounds like you're pulling off the ultimate heist so that, yeah. like, he sick. basically doesn't have any so money sick. to pay your bounty because you've <laughs> oh, taken all of his you're money. All his rules. money? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. The premise is great. <laughs> it's, uh, I always get confused, so I made sure to look it up 15 times. I never know when the hell, because every single Star Wars thing mm-hmm. is in between two other Star Wars things. Cowards. Which, yeah. which is it in between? It's in between uh, Empire and Return of the Jedi. Obviously, yeah. we yeah, saw Han Jabba's Solo here. and Jabba. Yeah. Jabba ain't dead. It's before yeah. Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, they're playing the hits on that. Yeah. Uh, locations. Luke uh, will show up at some point. I, that's I'll be that's what I'm afraid yeah. of. Like, Luke or Han like, or yeah. Millennium Falcon will fly by. The, 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 it's gotten to the point with Star Wars where Andor is my favorite Star War maybe ever. And Same like nice. I love the original trilogy. But like it's gotten to the point where I dread a Jedi showing up. Like I don't want to see a lightsaber. Unless it's Cal Kestis. Sure. <laughs> Cal Kestis yeah, shows that up would in be this. wild. I I'd will be like, oh, die. okay. I will die. Is that time period right? <laughs> yeah, that could work, right? Uh, it could happen. It's, it's some years after, but yeah. He'd be older, It'd be like yeah. nine or so years later, I believe, yeah, yeah, was yeah. The, the number. So I could, I, I'd could, i be okay with that. But yeah. like, or BD1 showing up. <laughs> That'd be <laughs> sick. <laughs> which I think he did in something else, but like, yeah. Yeah, some of the locations, which I'll be honest, like, I don't know Star Wars well enough to like recognize most of these. Tatooine, baby, we're going the, back. There's Tatooine, there. yes. They, they've got that for sure. Yep. Kanto Bite. Oh, okay. Uh, Kijimi. That, Akiva. I know there's some new ones. Akiva sounds familiar. And then the new one is uh, Toshara, which is a savanna like planet that they came up with. Great. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I need to see more of the open world stuff because this was just a story trailer because yeah. that you know you, you throw you throw Ubisoft and open world into the same sentence yeah. and sometimes it can be a little concerning yeah you know the, the bloat the repetition you know they're they're very guilty of that yeah. well that's one of the things that's interesting about this because so Brian Shea from Game Informer he got to do a hands-on preview yeah he got to play for a little bit uh, and he was talking about uh, the city in Toshara uh, called uh, Miragana. The devs are saying that they made it more dense and compact. So you have a lot of activities in a smaller space rather than Thank just you, wandering so. around a bunch yeah. of empty streets trying yeah. to see if there's anything there or not. Great. You know? Division like if, 2. Sorry. Uh, well, I was just going to say, like, if this game is like for a normal playthrough, like not trying to be a completionist but not speedrunning it, like if it's like 22 hours. Yeah. I'd be like twenty to yeah. beat it, fifty completions. Yeah, 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 or yeah exactly, yeah. Right, right, right. exactly. Uh, shout out to Division's world building; mm. they're so good at that. So that is also something I'm looking forward to. And this, hopefully, is carrying that world building over. Just environmental storytelling, 
really good uh, uh, documents and cutscenes and mission structure to lend itself to yeah. the narrative. Yeah. Like, they're really good at that. So. Did you hear about this reputation system, though? No. So this is what's crazy. So there's four main crime syndicates there, right? You've oh. got, you know, the Pikes and the I'm, Huts. I'm and all in with guys. the Huts. So... But I will betray everyone for the huts. <laughs> you have you you gain and lose reputation with them based on different things. Oh yeah, huts. And they're saying yeah. that like one you know one of the things is like well because you're all you know a bunch of scumbags it's like they know that sometimes you're gonna do something that crosses them, hmm. but the you know but they might still end up working with you later because mutually beneficial or whatever. Right? It's a hive of scum and villains. So but the, one of the things <laughs> that they're saying is that like like when you're like in a mission inside of enemy territory. Like, that's one of the things where stealth matters. Because if you get through stealthily... And they never knew And they it was never know it was right. you. That is next Then your reputation level. doesn't take a hit. That's cool. Dude. But then if you, like, start getting into firefights and stuff, then you, you might be on their bad side. That... I... Makes sense. Love that. <laughs> that is... That's cool. Very encouraging. Um, yeah, because that's always annoying in a game where it's, like, you, like break a crime do a crime or whatever and then like they immediately just know it was yeah. you and you're like, like what the how, hell? Do you, how do you know that yeah i'm wearing a full mask yeah <laughs> like no one <laughs> saw me yeah exactly um another thing that they were we were talking about that's kind of cool with that with the infiltrations is that um you know because she's got her like her blaster right right uh but you can uh, pick up a lot of enemy weapons that drop or have your little uh pet mm. um nicks run out and get stuff for you oh uh, but if like if you pick up an enemy weapon, like it's a more powerful weapon, but you can only use it until it runs out of ammo, mm -hmm. right? Because you're not just running yeah. around with piles of every kind of ammo on you. Yeah, that's cool. I like it's gonna that. be awesome playing without a Star Wars game without a lightsaber. It, mm -hmm. I feel like it's been a very long time <laughs> since I ran around in a Star Wars game. You know, obviously there's especially like especially if they're taking that more kind of deliberate, like almost Deus Ex or like mm -hmm. where you have to be like kind of intentional about how you're going into these places yeah. and like actually manage your ammo and stuff yeah. like that that'd be mm -hmm. pretty cool and they were saying too with that is um adventure making, survival making decisions <laughs> on what to do with stuff so that like the one base that he went through he stole this surveillance footage and it's like and i guess it showed like someone like betraying that crime boss or whatever oh. and it's like you can either give it like to that faction or you can sell it to the other faction that sent you, you know. And so again, it's like, whose reputation do you want to raise right now, dude? I am gonna be yeah. the Hut's most <laughs> lethal and ruthless enforcer the galaxy has ever known, Bloodworth. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, you know the Huts are bad guys, right? Yes. Okay, okay, just check. Uh, so bad. Yeah, they're all bad guys. That's, <laughs> yeah, the, whole point. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then Brian also liked the way the uh, speeder bike felt. You got oh, to ride on the speeder bike a little bit. Sweet. So. Any word on ship combat? I know it's in this game, and the idea it's in there, but we haven't. Like, I don't think he got to play it. I feel I like on that planet. I feel like Star Wars and like ship combat have been so separate for so long. Yeah. Obviously, we have Star Wars Battlefront, which had both, but like that's multiplayer. We had squadrons, little, little different. Yeah, it's been a while since. Well, squadrons, squadrons was squadrons. just ship combat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the idea of being okay. on a planet open world, oh. riding around, doing whatever, and then flying into space. I want to see how all that yeah. plays out. Yeah. Which is a good time to ping Damiani, because I know he likes that. Yeah, Damiani. What are you thinking? Ping. Uh, hmm. Star Wars fatigue, He's hitting skeptical. him hard. He, yeah. He's, he's I mean, yeah. yeah, like, I'm sorry. I, I can't get I can't get excited about Star Wars. I just <laughs> yeah. can't. I mean, I'm, I'm, I think this game will be good, and I think I'll enjoy playing it, and I do want to play it. But, yeah, I, I, I mean, I actually didn't get, I just watched the trailer as you guys were playing it because i just been kind of too busy to see it. And watching it, like, has cool scenes. It's like, how do, I don't know if there's gameplay that accompanies it, but how does it... How's it going to play? I know you're describing it from the preview that they got hands on with, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like I didn't, I haven't played the division. Like I didn't play avatar. So like, I don't know their work. So like personally, really so I don't have that level of trust and I know you're speaking highly of it, Huber, mm -hmm. but there've been so many times there've been star Wars premises that look cool. Like the trailers yeah. make it look cool. And it does not you know, pan out when you get your hands on it or when you're in like theaters seeing it, like whatever it is around the screen, you no know, show, whatever it is. So I'm, 
I'm like how people I think feel about Marvel is like how I feel about like Star Wars. I'm like, I mm-hmm. just feel like it needs to go away for a while and like sure. just not come back for a few years. But every year we're still getting stuff. And I know it's a huge property, but I, I again, I think this has a lot of potential. And I think this might be one of the good things to come out with Star Wars branding in a while. And uh, I, I will be honest, like I'm, I'm rooting for it. I just it's I just cannot get personally excited about this. Yeah. I feel that. Uh, one thing about the open world, like I, I'm playing Jedi Survivor right now, finally, and th- I love that game so much, but each planet still feels like a video game adventure yeah. place. It's like open field. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. It, just all the platforming, how it's all set up. It doesn't always feel like I'm actually on a planet. Yeah. So I hope Star Wars Outlaws is really just really leans into like, yo, this actually feels like I'm on Tatooine or just the exploration. I want it to feel a little more natural. Yeah. To kind of echo what Damiani was saying, like my, you know, I'm not like lying in the sand hard out on Star Wars, but I'm definitely like tired of it. Like I didn't watch Ahsoka or whatever. Mm. Um, can't be bothered, man. But it was like, a good one. what? It was good. But um, I loved Andor, you know, and like what had me excited about this is that it is more akin to that where, you know, and, and so the criminal element, this, tra- yeah, <laughs> but this trailer leaning on the like member berries kind of more than I wanted to has me a little concerned because I'm just like what I want from Star Wars is just like deep side shit. Yeah. Like, like, I want Jabba's son. Yeah, or like, <laughs> I want someone who has nothing to do with anything. Like, that's what I like about Andor is he's getting sucked into stuff that he has nothing to do with, right? Yeah. I want like, you know, some of the Star Wars Visions stuff had like kind of cool ideas where it was like, okay, these are people just like way out here doing whatever, you know? Like, show me something on the outer rim just has yeah. nothing to do with anything, you know, who like maybe slightly dips yeah. into the, the lore stuff. You know, or it's just, crazy that yeah. they like. It feels like they they are just incapable of doing it. It's so they're, wild. They're so what afraid. is that about? They're so afraid. Yeah, <laughs> it's like and we've got to like, have Jedi's. We got we have to mention or connect to a Skywalker yeah, somehow. somehow. Yeah. Like, right, right. Even rhymes. a throwaway line. Yeah, like God, to me, it's like just make like if if they're nervous about it not like having to perf- if it has to perform right, just make it cheaper. <laughs> yeah, make like make like a you make know, three less planets, or, or just have it be like a more intimate story. Yeah, you know, I don't know, but yeah. you know, we could we could talk Star Wars till the cows come home. Like, I'm ever hopeful for the return of of Star Wars. I like because I mean I was a mega fan of yeah. Star Wars. Comes and goes. Robamiani's a person you can't just put bottled water on its shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Heber, you kind of brought this up, uh, but uh, as, as is the the way now, when we yeah. re- announce a release date Here on a AAA game, <laughs> our game editions. I know this oh, is. These are yeah. This is upsetting. There's a gold this edition and an ultimate edition. I'm upset. I'm upset about this. Heber's standing up. Yeah, no. For because listeners. why? <laughs> because what am I most hyped about for this game, Bloodworth? Jabba the Hut. Yeah. Tell me what's in that that second edition that's like 80 or 90 bucks. Oh, it's more than that. Yeah, it's I wish it was 80 or 90 bucks. It is $110 okay. for the gold edition. Okay. And 30 for the big one. <laughs> the season pass uh, comes with it including two DLCs. Yeah. The Java's Gambit exclusive mission at launch. Exclusive <laughs> Java <laughs> mission. Oh, they what got him. What the hell, dude? <laughs> got him. Like, why are you holding that hostage? The Kessel Runner cosmetic pack. Which, it feels <laughs> irritating that they call it that. <laughs> but it, yeah. It is the prime textbook example of publishers weaponizing their IPs to take advantage of fans. Mm. It is 100% that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I love Some Jabba. Mortal the Kombat Hutt. strategy. Exactly. I love Jabba. <laughs> I want to do the Jabba content, and you're going to charge me an extra fifty bucks for what is probably some like twenty five minute mission. Oh, yeah. right. If it's that, like, yeah. come right. on. It's though. like a bounty you can yeah. do. Yeah. Like the, no. It's like, yeah. do we really need to paywall that mission? The one what? that that re- it reminds me of Huber was the infamous Second Son. Remember there was like a pre-order mission or something like that where like you had Cole and Zeke yeah. in there yep. from the old games. Totally. And because I reviewed that game, you got I, it. I didn't have access oh, to that mission. You didn't have it. Oh my god. 
And it was not available separately for I don't know how long. So it was like sometime way later when I was finally able to play that. Wow. And then it ended up being just like the most like Throw nothing away. mission. Yeah. Like yeah. there was really nothing going on. Like you had like a portrait of them and some audio log kind of co- conversation. And Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's what's so funny about these. And like I've seen through them since the start, but like. They they necessarily cannot be good because <laughs> they're not going to put in enough effort mm-hmm. to you know to make them worthwhile, and you know so it's like they they by their very nature can't be worth yeah. anything. So like it's always so funny when they're like, oh, you get this mission or this like bonus item or whatever. Yeah. It's like it literally can't be good. Yeah. Or it would throw off the the game. It mm-hmm. would break everything. And yeah. committing that early to a season pass is like. Well, yeah, but I mean, you, just don't, you don't even know what's going to be in the, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. DLCs. Like, if it was if it was Resident Evil, I don't even know if I would commit to like a hundred fifty dollars season pass edition. It's like I'll just yeah. get it when it comes out in a year. <laughs> like, why, when it's, why it gets to... it gets into weird, like almost like Kickstartery kind of territory too, because <laughs> yeah. it's like, what if a game comes out has like massive technical problems or is a is a financial failure? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, this is rare, but like it could conceivably just like they would abandon it before more stuff would come out, you know? Like, obviously not for this, but, like, it could happen where you get the season pass early for nothing. Like, nothing ever comes out. Yeah. You know? Crazy. It also comes with three days early access. Here we that go. Old, that, that old that's course. what they're actually course. charging for. Yep, yeah, that's that it. That people pay for. And that's then, the number one. above that, there's the Ultimate Edition, which is $130, <sighs> uh, which includes all that same stuff. But... Dragon's Dogma is microtransactions. Yeah, you can buy a pork crystal <laughs> for $4, $2, whatever. That also comes with the Sabak Shark Bundle, which includes uh, more cosmetics for Kay, her blaster, for Nyx, for her speeder. Sabak and- Shark, it's like poker shark. Sabak is that card game. Mm-hmm. And, and the Trailblazer spaceship. Then Queen's there's blood, dude. They're coming oh, for Queen's it. Blood. And then there's another set of cosmetics uh, called the Rogue Infiltrator Bundle. And then there's a digital art book. Digital. So, cool. That hurts. Yeah. yeah. Give me that Shoot physical. Shoot me a PDF, dude. Physical art. Come Including on. unique cinematic storyboards. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> really hyped on the game, though. Uh, I mean, the all game these, all these editions are annoying guess, as hell. Uh, I did actually copy and paste it. I, I probably should have. But it, I guess they're also saying it's like, well, if you get Ubisoft Plus, you can get all of this for, you know, seventeen ninety nine per month or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. I Good. mean... That's a go. It's a Game Pass situation, yeah. you know. It's like, hey, if I'm gonna burn through Star Wars Outlaws in one month and never play it again, I can pay 18 bucks, or I can, you know, buy it and own it for 70. I mean, I just, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, yeah, it's whatever. I mean, I, I pay for Game Pass, and I haven't turned on my Xbox <laughs> in three months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I will assume that uh, Jeff Keeley. Has a big trailer locked and loaded. Ooh. Oh yeah. Locked and for, loaded. For Gamescom? Star Wars is Keely Core. Oh, Gamescom. So. It's gonna blow up at Gamescom. This is when's yeah. it come out? August 30th. Yeah. It'll be after Gamescom. I mean, that's Gamescom. But yeah, Summer Game Fest, there mm-hmm. could be something too. Gamescom Maybe both. Loaded. Yeah. So Why not Game both? Fest, dude. Yeah. Uh Woo! well actually we'll have a Ubisoft conference too, so there'll probably be a big part yeah. of that. Yeah, definitely. I mean it's Star Wars, so it's and, and Ubisoft games mostly sell pretty well i feel like um man i'm thinking back to the definitely E3. primed to be one of the biggest games of the year the e3 days like the booth would have a big presence for this the mm-hmm. the just dance dancers would do a star wars dance yeah oh man yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> those are the it. days all right moving on to something a little smaller uh isla you got to ah. put a little bit of time into children of the sun the crazy sniper puzzle one bullet Sick. game Tell us about this. How's this actually yeah. played now? You're the new murderer of Easy Allies. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, rocking uh, well, this I mean, Children that, of the Sun. That uh, jeez, that's part of uh, <laughs> what I want to talk about with this game because it. Uh, yeah. All right. So, <laughs> uh, this is a very cool premise. I really like the idea of this game. The style. It's you know very stylized. Mm-hmm. Uh, you play as the girl Just in all looks caps. Awesome. Taking out the cult. In all caps. Take them out. Um, this is the kind of game where I was like, the vibe is so intense. And like, <laughs> like I had, I like, I like 
put it on pause and read interviews with the creator just to be like, what angle are we approaching <laughs> this from? <laughs> like, are we glorifying this? Like, what are we... Because, like, okay... The, the game is it's it kind of neat the way it controls. You basically mostly use the mouse. You just scroll left and right to walk around the perimeter of the levels like that. Mm -hmm. And then for viewers. And then you click to look through the scope, you know, and you can line up your shots. You mark your targets so you can keep track of how many there are. There's a number in the corner that says like six. And you're like, mm -hmm. okay, I need to find six people. And you have to like rotate around until you can see all of them. And then it introduces... Uh, it, you know, the kind of the evolution of the gameplay is really interesting because like fifth or sixth mission will be like breakfast time. You know, it's got a very like hot hotline Miami yeah, kind of yeah. vibe to it. Um, and, you know, the mission is like breakfast time. It's like, OK, there are no targets besides fish and birds. And it's teaching you you can target fish and birds to get like a bird's eye view because every time oh, okay, you shoot it, something, yeah. the oh. bullet stops at that target and you can like you know line up to the next one and if one of the birds is a target or a gas tank you can pause Amazing. from there and line up your shots so like a lot of times in later levels you know you know the number will say eight or whatever like like levels like the one being shown right now you know you can't see everybody from, can't see you out can't there. see out there and like sometimes you can't circle the whole level you know like there are logs or something blocking mm. your way so like you'll have to use these elements um to smart. find all your targets that adds a huge layer mm. yeah and then it, it starts adding you know the story is kind of interesting you know uh it starts adding some powers that you have yeah why does she want to take this cult out um, uh, do we know it's told wordlessly okay um i'll just say because it's right up front like uh they were in the cult Got and it. This girl is a survivor of the cult and maybe lost her parents to the cult. Like, maybe they died. Some kind of Kill yeah. Bill type yeah. I mean, esque. I, yeah, I, want, <laughs> okay. I don't want to get too much into it. But, okay. like, okay. you know, the, her family's dead and she's going in to get revenge against this cult, right? Mm -hmm. So, cult bad, you girl. Uh, and you have a sniper <laughs> rifle. Sweet. Cult bad, you girl. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so... Uh, it has a lot of interesting kind of stuff. So, and it introduces those kind of mechanics in 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 universe ways that make sense. It's like, okay, I've gone hunting for breakfast, and then you know she's it cuts to her like cooking the birds and fish for her breakfast. But it's like, okay, now I understand that every bird is a resource, and I can get a whole new bird's eye view. And every level, uh, as you can sometimes see in the footage we're showing, has kind of a subtitle. It's like a sentence, mm -hmm. and it'll say like, "You can see them all," or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's a subtle or not so subtle sometimes hint at what the challenge, like hidden challenges for some, most of the levels have this. So like if you like target ping every every enemy, the, that subtitle will show up for you can see them all and it'll get crossed off. And nice. it's like, okay, I got, oh, okay, got I it. found what it was talking about. Nice. That's like, like an optional challenge? They're or? optional, yeah. Got it, got it. Um, and then, yeah, it introduces like weak spots. And if you hit two weak spots, you can re-aim. You can bend the bullet somewhat in in the air as one of your powers, but like it's wanted. very very limited, very like wanted. It's very limited. <laughs> it's like spinning a bowling ball. Uh, yeah, um, like that. It's showing it right now, but it's you know only like a twenty degree cone in front mm -hmm. of you because it's a bullet. It's going incredibly fast. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the way they they evolve the story, it's really cool. Uh, I I definitely found this game, you know making me kind of depressed like it's sort of i mean it's a very grim topic and it's a very grim game i really enjoyed the the puzzle solving elements and the gameplay of it uh the theming and the like violence of it uh kind of bothered me more than a lot of games like hmm. i'm not i'm not really a slouch when yeah. it comes to to, to I'm violence so and stuff into like the that. blood oh yeah the it's, entire screen it's as you wild say this, yeah Alan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's it's an interesting looking game. It's a really cool game. I just found myself kind of like, I don't know, grossed at. I mean, like you know, life brings with it a lot of changes over time, and it's like I'm more aware of mortality than I used to be, and stuff like that. So you know, I'm maybe more sensitive than I used to be. But um, I looked up quotes after uh, there. So there was a part like ten or twenty missions in where you're cleaning your gun in a motel. And then a mini game pops up that says, I just killed a man, now I'm horny. Whoa. And I was like, well, 
Whoa. where are we coming at this from? You know? That is weird. And so that's I looked, a tonal. I looked into like a tonal shift. Yeah. So I looked into like an interview with the creator, and it seems like he's coming at it from the the right angle. He was he he said um, one one man dev team by himself, uh, which is pretty impressive. People are crazy. Um, and he said like nobody should be violent. Guns are shit. Nobody should own a gun. Like, if you even think about owning a gun, like, what the fuck are you doing with your life? And later he's like, but I don't know. It's like there's just something very interesting about violence and games. It just works well in games, unfortunately. And so I'm like, yeah. Like, <laughs> if it bleeds, it leads. You know, it sells. Yeah. And so, like, it's kind of an interesting case because I think I really enjoyed – the um, mechanics of it, like I was saying, but the the vibes of it were very intense. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I would say, you know, your mileage will vary maybe on that. Uh, In. I guess I'm more sensitive mm -hmm. to this now than I used to be, but, like, I enjoyed it. I, re I really liked it, but it made me depressed. <laughs> yeah. um, also, be sure to turn off replay tutorial. Uh, there's a little checkbox uh, because if you, like, fail or want to restart one of the missions and you have that checked... You'll have to do the tutorial before, if it had a mission tutorial before that, you'll have to do that again every uh, time. Well, Took me like okay. once and I was like, oh, I got to turn that off. <laughs> I'm watching a live gameplay right now and someone literally just did it after they failed the first attempt of a mission. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that explains why. Okay. Uh, the but one yeah. question I had, Isla, sometimes I'll see people with like these like s spheres around them. I, yeah. I, what's that about? So different enemy types get introduced as the game goes on. So okay. you get like shield guys, you get like psychic guys, you get like so it's it's stuff okay, like so that. So they have it's psychic towers like she does. Different, She's not yeah, unique. Yeah, different like enemy types and stuff like that. Got it. Um Got it. and it's it's interesting, like the way that they ramp up I haven't beaten it um yet, but I played a good a good amount of it. But uh the way they ramp up the the challenges and the and the kind of like the the power set is really interesting and how they introduce all the the tools in your toolkit. It's really well done and like the pacing of it is good. It's like a five hour game, you know. Yeah, so. yeah. They said three to five hours. Yeah. So chill. I think it's chill. I think I don't know. Check it out if you're into it. Uh, but you know, if you're sensitive to ultra violence, <laughs> you know, maybe you watch a stream first. Yeah. Sick. Cool. Well, along with uh, indie games like that. We got the first ever Triple I showcase. <laughs> they took it and they ran with it. <laughs> Made a whole <laughs> showcase out of Triple I games. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was just like a coalition of a bunch of different uh, independent developers. Um, I think that Evil Empire might have been like one of the spearheads, and uh, they're the ones uh, behind this new, uh, the Rogue Prince of Persia, which is the first one we'll talk about. Yeah. It closed out the show. Um, but, uh, yeah, a, a Prince of Persia roguelike, yeah. uh, coming out at us just right after another Prince of Persia game. Pretty wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Super hyped, because Dead Cells is a very excellent video game. Yeah, they worked on Dead Cells for people that I feel like the roguelite element will transfer well into this. Didn't Dead Cells just... Devs just announced a different. So that's game maybe? Motion Twin, who are like oh. the main dev, but I think oh. these guys like help with some of the additional content and stuff like that. I don't know the exact relationship. Um, okay. But yeah, it's an embarrassment of riches, Bloodworth. I haven't even played the last Prince of Persia, so like, I can't. I, I, I want to play it. It's installed. Yeah, <laughs> I can't be excited about this because that last one has had such good reviews. Such good word of mouth yeah. that like I am all in on when I have time going back and playing that one. So it is hard to be excited about another Prince of Persia when I haven't even played one that came out a couple months ago. Yeah. So there is that kind of that that overlap that to me is hurting it, which is shocking because it's like, you know, Prince of Persia was gone for a little bit there. And yeah, it's like a Silent Hill situation. Yeah, yeah bring it back. Two, like, the, two let's have more. Let's have more. Now there's but, five of them. Yeah. yeah, but then now at the same time, I'm feeling like, well, I, I I can't keep up. Like, I I need to play that other one because I've heard such good things. Yeah. So, uh, what's interesting is though, is that's wild. These guys, um, they pitched uh, Ubisoft on it, so it didn't it didn't yeah. come the other way around. Whereas, yeah, uh, Lost Crown was internal. Mm -hmm. Um. But, uh, yeah, so they started talking about it at GDC, and then they started talking to Ubisoft, and they're like, all right, let's 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 do this thing. Um, I mean, I would say I dig the style. It's different yeah. from the other one. And also, like, 
the time rewind power is like a perfect fit for a roguelike. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so they said that they're definitely it's inspired gonna be one more by Sands of Time. Yeah, um, and you have, uh, the prince has this, like, uh, this bola uh, that protects him. Yeah. And they kind of say, that, like, that's even, like, why he, like, was able to get all of this agility and, and everything. Because if he screwed up, well, it was like, oh, well, it would just rewind time for him, you know. And so yeah. he could try, you know, to be like Spider-Man and jump off a building. It's like, oh. I didn't make it that time, so let me try again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and, I feel yeah. like that's in stuff. I, I like that idea. That's cool. Uh, and then uh, this second clip is uh, they after the showcase, they actually did some some gameplay live. Oh, cool. Uh, so you get to see a little bit more of it here. I kind of love the like. It, it took nice. me a second. I yeah. kind of like the style a lot. Yeah, yeah the like more pastel. It's the kind of Mobius, yeah, like, like softer colors. Yeah. Um, it's Mobin time. It's Mobin time. And Mobin I knew time. you were gonna. I was waiting for you to say that. Yeah, like even his like skin tone is like very pink, purple. Um, I know in the trailer, I was like, "Why is this character purple?" Yeah. Which I kind of like. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it reminds me of um, uh, Thanos. No, well, yeah, it reminds me of like regular show or like um, Grimace, Infinity Train, Grimace. those, and also those. <laughs> A little bit of Scavengers Reign, which like bring back Scavengers Reign, dude. Season two, come on. Um, one thing that uh, they showed, like with the combat stuff, is um, that you can uh, kick enemies. So like you can actually knock them off ledges with with a swift kick, yeah, and then do a bit of fall damage. You can also slide under them, which is kind of a staple thing. Uh, and then one of the things they they brought back is the the kind of the the, the wall run. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of like yeah, run up really a wall good. and then bound over to, like, the poles sticking out, and there's, like, a lot of little platforming yeah. bits that are like that. Damiani, man, I know you're into The Lost Crown, but uh, how are you feeling on this? Because I know, or, or, or are you are you into rogue lights? I mean, this looks awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, 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 like, s- surprised that we're getting <laughs> one so soon, but, like, yeah. it's also funny because... Like what a month or so ago, we were talking about like, oh, like what are the two go to things for franchises that need to like revive themselves or need <laughs> yeah. like a different way forward? It's like Metroidvania <laughs> yeah. and roguelites. And it's yeah. like Prince of Persia is just literally doing both in yeah. less than a year. And I'm like, all right, well, I mean, Perfect. that's great because yeah. if they can't make those, you know, the 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 3D action platformer ones anymore and they have to stick to like a, a side scrolling perspective, then I, I mean it's the hotness it, it, it ruins either making a metroidvania or they're making a roguelite and it's totally. like I, I it's like the easiest like advice you could give any company is like your franchise is stalling out right now or needs like you know something to rejuvenate it try one of these two things and it's like prince bird is like let, let's go now go now like strike while the iron is hot and I, I i do think it's good because i think people are like oh lost crown was like good but like i, I feel like a lot of people have moved on from it s- since and this just looks like very easy to get into. Also, you know, a little bit relying more on the, uh, the, you know, like the, it looks about the same amount of platformer. I was going to say, but like the running up the, like the wall thing I'm seeing is like, and like, that's like so simple, but like, that's what I feel like, you know, maybe it was like missing a little bit. And like, in the lost crown is that you have all these great traversal mechanics, but you don't have like wall running like that. You don't, you don't really necessarily have like those things that you had like in sands of time. And this is still me- able to capture the essence of that a little bit with those, those sequences and the slowdown and the possibly, you know, the, the time rewind. So that's, pretty cool and yeah this art like it looks so different yeah. like this in lost crown looks so drastically different that i think it's gonna help it a lot that they're they're willing to th- this is what this is what it means to like put some effort into like your your visual identity you know the aesthetic the art direction like this is you know indie or whatever it doesn't have to like all look the same like this yeah. is like there's a very Unique very looking. talented like art team behind this and it shows Hell yeah, down here. Yeah, I wonder if, uh, like, if this game, like, gets a good foothold and a lot of people start to play. Because I know, like, you know, people really like roguelikes. Mm-hmm. I wonder if uh, it would bring people back to Lost Crown who maybe overlooked yeah. it. And uh, Dead Cells had, you know, Blood You Joker on. Dead Cells was supported oh. with oh patches God, and post content yeah. long <laughs> stuff for, like, years. Yeah. yeah. So uh, one would assume that uh, this game is is just getting started. It hasn't yeah. even started yet. Right. So 
Took me a second with the title, but now I really like it. The Rogue Prince of the Persia. The Rogue Prince of Persia. Yeah. Really yeah. Cool. Uh, Huber, the, uh, so when you, when you do get killed and the bola sends you back, you have yeah. this place called the Oasis. Here we go. And it's very Permanent. much like Rogue Legacy 2. Yes, So it's like, you kind of like build up different facilities. Amazing. Ooh. I'm addicted. Like that's, there. I'm addicted. Okay. Okay. I'm streaming till 6 a.m. That's what we're here for. <laughs> Don't at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is the only early access the date we have, right? Yeah, I think Ooh, they only showed it here. I was going to say, yeah. 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 It's release date this access. year, just early no, access. One. May yeah, 14th I want to correct, my, yeah. I wanted to correct myself that it might actually launch this year. So, yeah, okay, uh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. I'll be there when the when the real deal comes out. Hey, that gives me a chance to uh, play Lost Crown then. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. No rush here. Yeah. Excellent. Um, some of the weapons they laid, they laid out in the email... Um, there's the twin daggers, spears, okay. broadswords, axes, uh, and then secondary weapons uh, include shields, bows, grappling hooks. Nice. Like a, there you go. Uh, Axe and, like and a grappling hook. While we're seeing this loading, a uh, little inside baseball I recently learned is that that's a requirement from Sony to get certified is that the loading screen has to have some kind of moving element to let players know that the game is still trying. Oh, it hasn't frozen? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Which I never knew. I never awesome. knew that. That's I was like, wow, that's cool. real good inside baseball. That's cool. Uh, they also mentioned, Huber, that there are like lore rooms along Ooh. the way where you, you talk to different characters and, and get Rogue parts Legacy of the too. story. Yeah. So that's like part it's of... It's a nod. It's a nod to Rogue Legacy 2. Of yeah, like, moving forward and, and unlocking new biomes and stuff. Excellent. I'm also curious if they have, I mean, just trying to like, you know, like hidden chests, all that, that all the stuff you're talking about sounds good. Uh, like any kind of like boss fights, like are they going to go that direction yeah, or is there, this more? Uh, there was uh, a boss fight. They Mad. they fought okay. against a general who was like a big minotaur. He had like ground oh. spike coming out, throwing rocks around in a ground pound and stuff like that. Um, the Oh, and then one of the other me- mechanics is uh, there's a ton of games that do this like uh, with medallions. Um, and so you have four medallion slots. Okay. Oh, okay. And so, so yeah. Oh, it's yeah, that's so Rogue Legacy. Looking. That's looking good. Yeah, so yeah, one of the medallions they like showed it. adds uh, poison to projectile attacks. Nice. Oh, I love that. Uh, and that then was there's awesome. another one that will, like, basically start a fire when you kick somebody oh into my a God. wall. Comparing stats on your we- oh here we go. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm hyped about this. Like, so yeah, that, that wasn't a thing in Lost Crown. Lost Crown, everything was like fixed. You did have like the amulets though, and like you know powers, and that, mm-hmm. that that's kind of like where you could like mix and match. But yeah, having to actually in the heat of combat pick up a weapon and decide like is raw damage more or like look at yeah. those secondary stats or, or like a, a a bonus effect on it. Like is that worth it more? And when- so it's kind of fun. I mean, crucially important for a game like this, and especially Prince of Persia, is the traversal looks really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Getting around looks real fun. Yeah, like standing Uh, on the poles and then jumping is really cool. I will say the remedial enemies don't look like they're really doing i mean they the swing back, but yeah. like yeah it's, compared it's to like, like, like yeah compared to like lost crown man like they yeah. really push you but i get that's a more like action heavy like uh, you know like more like a character action type combat system than with combo strings and all that that doesn't look like this is what this is focusing on but yeah we're gonna need like besides environmental hazards enemies are like just like making your life hell in a roguelite like uh, the rogue legacy i'm thinking of like yep. just constant bullet hell part like sequences where like that's getting fired at and like well don't forget they know all sides right too. i was gonna say these these <laughs> yeah. are the devs i know like, i know but early still levels need to, like, of rogue legacy is, yeah like, do you need to see it but premise wise this is great yeah um and then the other little bit that i had written down from get my demo, hands on those plants uh, they have these little guys uh, running around with with big bags full of gold, <gasps> loot so, goblins. Yeah, yeah. So you have to chase them down to 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 get the gold. Love a loot goblin. Yeah, there. I will. Big I will risk it goblin. all. Oh yeah, <laughs> overextend. Oh yeah, <laughs> get the loot goblin. I will take the bait every time. <laughs> this is some spelunky ass shop. Yeah, I like the shops right along here. the way. Especially like with little kids shopkeepers. Like, hey, we got some stuff for you. You want it? Love a kid shopkeeper. <laughs> In a in a game like this or Baldur's Gate or whatever, hyped, nice. Uh, well, we'll keep moving through the rest of this Triple uh, I stuff. Uh, the rest of this, I'm not. Hi, hi, hi. I'm not going to go through every game, and some of these will be quicker than others, just because some of them are, there's like just a quick update. We know everything, or some of them we don't know anything yet. Uh, but I will get like a, a hype check. Uh, Slay the Spire 2, Huber. We got a teaser yeah. trailer. 
Ah. Early access 2025. Yeah. Early access 2025. Um, Slay the Spire, I put in the same category as Darkest Dungeon 1 in terms of I will never beat it. Oh, mm. yeah. No. Okay. I'm terrible um, at that game. Slay the Spire 1 is phenomenal. Yeah. It is an A-plus video game. My only problem with it is when a game is that punishing and that brutal and it all comes down to RNG, Random, yeah. it's re- it, like the mental damage is is too hard for even, even me. I just can't take it. Mm-hmm. So like Hand of Fate, Hand of Fate 2, Slay the Spire, these games where it, it really feels like there's nothing you could have done. Yeah. Um, it can be really disheartening. Um, so I Chris- wonder if Slay the Spire 2 will... Yeah. Lean yeah. into, you know, changing that element of it. My friend Chris, Chris Wen, you know, uh, from Game Trailers Days, is a Slay of the Spire, like, savant. Yeah, I remember this. Genius yeah. at Slay yeah. the Spire. Mm. I remember just watching him beat a run, and I was just like, how? Yeah, how? how, yeah. <laughs> I, was how? Like, I could get to, like, the third area, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really, really awesome announcement, though. I had no idea that was coming. Yeah, so yeah, yeah that's that really was a good world premiere that they had there. Yeah. So uh, cool. Big but one, uh, big one. we don't know a lot about it. We know that it's going to be in a new engine. Uh, we know they're going to have some new features and new visuals, and uh, they're going to expand mods. Um, but mm. outside of that, don't know. Sweet. Mm. Uh, Shadows of Doubt. Um, Huber, I don't know if you remember seeing this one before. This is like a voxel-based, like hard-boiled crime drama. Yes, I've been following oh, this. This has been in early yeah. access. For yeah, it's a been in early access time. for about a I've year. I've been waiting, dude. Oh, yes, is this coming out finally? I think so. It's a, they said that it's coming to consoles this year. Which this is probably was when it hits 1.0. Dude, this was on my number one watch list last year because mm. I was hoping it was going to come out in time for Goaties, but it never was officially released 1.0. So excited for this game. Yeah, Deus Ex vibes. Like Blade Runner, hard boiled yeah, yeah. noir. So pumped for this game, dude. When's the date, Blood? Give me the date. So just just this year. There's okay. an assassin update that came out uh yesterday. Okay. It's a new kind of like case file to go through. Yeah. Um I, well, I the sell of this game yeah. was that the most shocking things can just happen in your game, like mm. depending on what you're doing. Um, there's a lot of freedom and just a lot of surprises. Yeah. Yeah, quote, uh, explore fully simulated cities and meet individual citizens, each with their own name, job, apartment, and daily routine. Mm-hmm. You can just, like, follow people, Shenmue style. Yeah. On your hunt to track down a serial killer. Yeah. Uh, use a variety of gadgets uh, to uncover evidence, investigate suspects, and approach each case your way. Scan fingerprints, browse call logs, read private emails, bribe citizens, check CCTV, <laughs> pick locks, break down doors, sabotage security systems, Multiple ways to solve each case, mm-hmm. and the early access players were pretty pretty stoked about it. You know, nice. sometimes early access can be like, eh, "This isn't really working." Everyone was like, "Yo, this is pretty freaking good." So here, yeah, yeah, it looks cool. All right, Don, uh, play this. Here we go. Don bait baby. Oh, this one, yeah. Yeah. So this this is this was great because um, it just watching the. The, it's one of those trailers that like fits Uh-oh. the showcase so well because if you see the name, it, you, it spoils the premise. <laughs> because it's like, okay, here's this, this top down city builder kind of RTS thing. Okay, you're building your towns. You're in England protecting people from Vikings. Yeah. And then. Good wall building looks All like. of a sudden. Destiny is all. The Vikings Destiny. have harnessed an ancient evil. And it is riding out on a dinosaur. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> so with armor. awesome. A dinosaur with armor. Yeah. So dope. Yeah. And they're just smashing through your ramparts and everything. And like, yeah, Stegosaurus is lined so with shields. Sick. And you're just like, and like, and, and the, th- the thing is, is that in a lot of these shots, it looks kind of jank. Oh, like, yeah. But it's like, this I don't know. in an endearing this way, marvelous. though. Yeah. This looks like str- Stronghold when it's, when it's, Hitting on all cylinders. This looks like Dawn is bringing it to Hall of Greats in October. Oh, yeah. I've got, got a huge and then that smile logo, on my face. Dino Lords. <laughs> you got what, Dawn? Just a huge smile on my face. Yeah. Don, I, gave, I, gave I did have an idea for you, smile. Don, for Hall of Greats. We should give you a whole Hall of Greats one, one time. <laughs> oh, Just my God. Your, your presentation takes the whole time. If chat and pays we have to, for we, it. And, and yeah. we have to judge it. Yeah. <laughs> The and then still none of us vote for it. Yeah, and then it gets three votes. <laughs> <laughs> two and a half hour. Uh, I'll speak for two and a half hours. Wait, two and a half. Dawn, like two Dawn hours. brings everything, two but hours. then we have to vote on him. 
Don presents for two every hours, game. Don? <laughs> All of Don. Yeah, I like that. If Don brings six games <laughs> and then we vote, I'm a shoe in. <laughs> I love I'm this kind of idea. The, the Don I cut. Yeah. love this idea. I'm kind of into it. Can we do this, please? I think we can. I think we just have the to. The Hall of it. Dawn. The Hall of Dawn. <laughs> Red Sky's so gonna good. be pissed. We're gonna. He's gonna have to make a whole new page on the, yep. the wiki for this nonsense. Uh, Don, Exhibition go, round, you know. Go ahead and play the next one. Uh, we've we've seen this before. It has looked sick. I think they probably uh, had a demo or something that I've missed. Uh, Gestalt, yeah, Steam and yeah. Cinder. This is also yeah, been there was cooking. A demo, I think. These yeah. freaking early access, yeah, you, you forget about them for like two yeah. years, yeah. and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, we're coming out. It's like, oh. Great shit. style, great yeah, animation, yeah. kind of steampunkish vibes. Very um, hyped. The main character looks really neat. Huge mm-hmm. jacket, huge hair, huge hat. Like, yeah, this is a character design right here. Mm-hmm. Almost like Neo Geo height. Character mm, sprites. Right, Not right. quite that tall, but some Neo Geo energy. Good yeah, call. Yeah. Great call. Nice mix of swords and guns. I think her hair just lit on fire. It there looks for great awesome. visually. Some path of exile that is skill some tree there. Skill tree. <laughs> yeah. Woo! This um, looks fun. Yeah. That looks like a metal slug boss right yeah, here. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's got some nice wall jumps, some nice like roll behind some dudes. Dark Souls uh, main fully, character fully. there. As long as they don't introduce some bullet hell, I'm in. Yeah. If I was in Fantasy League, I'd scoop this sucker up quick. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. When's it come out? May twenty first. Yeah. Jackpot. Was it oh. in? Uh, was it in open? Uh, I don't know access? if it was in early access. I, I, I think it had a demo. I don't think it had early access. Yeah, I feel like it. It, it was definitely announced a Wait, long her name is Alethea? time ago. Spelled differently, but that was my first girlfriend's name. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, so May twenty first, <laughs> the same day as Hellblade two, the same day as Paper Trail. So yeah, just it's a just, hell of a day, Bloodworth. Just a lot going on. It's It'll a hell be of fine. a day, man. Um, talk about side jobs to earn extra scrap. Ancient enigmas threatening the very foundation of Canaan. Nice. Where's yeah. Steamworld Dig Three, dude? Where? They yeah. did quest. They did heist. Well, they've been working on. They just, they yeah, did, they're, uh, they're expanding build or build. whatever. They just yeah. Did up, update on build. They've been making a lot of other shit. They'll come yeah. back. I gotta hop into build more. They'll yeah. come back to it. I played a demo and I was like, okay. Steam World Three will be on the first wave of Switch, Switch two, two games. games. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah, dude. I love <laughs> Steam World Dig <laughs> Two and One. Yes. And uh, heist. Two, Steam World Dig Two is one of the best indie games. Steam World Two got. is. Fucking incredible. 100%. 100%. Play it if you haven't. Play this, Don. So Vampire oh, Survivors. Here we go. Here we go. First of all, come to PlayStation finally. Getting out there on that PlayStation. <laughs> Just Greg Miller. In the yeah. Greg Miller was begging for it. And yeah. so they said, like, all right, here it is. They put a lot of funny quotes in here at the beginning. Um, but then uh, a little later into the trailer, they start showing like this. like There are no vampires in this game. Yeah. <laughs> They're in there. Uh, the garlic looks like balls. So yeah. It really does. Uh, but yeah, they start showing this animated sequence, and it's just like, wait, what is, what's happening? Because I wasn't even sure at this point. I was like, is this still Vampire Survivors? It's like, oh yeah, there's sort of. And then there's like robots, and there's guys with guns, and it's a whole freaking Contra add on yep. to yeah. Vampire Survivors. Operation Guns. Galoo! Now, Operation Guns. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm into it. Oh, uh, it's a good fit. You got your bullet hell with your bullet hell. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, after the animation, we do get to see the little bit of them in action. Uh, this oh, yeah. is coming up quick. Uh, May 9th. <laughs> this DLC is dropping. Shit. Oh, my God. And I think it's only like two fifty or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they're all like a they're all like yeah, two bucks. Yeah, it's a super cheap game, right? It's like ten dollars yeah. for the main game. No, right? it's like three. No, <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, uh, Pepper's <laughs> Look at them on the little cart. Yeah. Well, then what's great is they actually like have some of the bosses and yeah, stuff yeah. in there from. Like, yeah, the it looks. Yeah. It actually looks. I was about to be a little poo pooey on it. Because I've played so much Vampire Survivors, like it's one of those things where I'm like, I'm good. I don't need to play it ever again. I played for like 50 hours. I'm, I'm we fat- did all yeah. play a lot. I'm of like Vampire fatigued, at, at like more than any kind of fatigue. I'm so fatigued on it. But that I actually st- looked, I strain. Yeah, that <laughs> actually looked different enough, and I like Contra a lot. So I was like, mm, maybe, maybe I'll hop back into that. Cool. Cataclysmo. I don't know if you've been paying attention to this. It's Cataclysmo wave of content. <laughs> 
Hogger's Hope. Hogger's Hope. What? I'm sure it's Hagar, but it was Hogger's <laughs> Hope. So one G. Yeah, so this is from the makers of Moonlighter Moonlight and the cool. Mage Seeker. Oh. Uh, but it is like uh, RTS tower defense uh, style game. Oh. Um, and uh, these, yeah, Spanish devs. But it's really interesting the way that mm. uh, you construct your defenses because you make your towers and stuff like brick by brick. Oh. And so they're showing you like putting down the stone uh, and the wood and everything whoa. piece by piece. I just had a, a like a panic attack. Same, <laughs> but whoa. there's a couple of things. Cool that, there's a couple of things with that. So one, the more like brick that's on top of each other, and the more structure there is connecting it, the the stronger each individual brick becomes. Okay. Um, and, and the greater your disappointment when the enemy tears it down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, another thing is that. Um, because they know like RTS just kind of inherently comes with like that that stress of like yeah. you know, the enemy's coming, the enemy's coming. So when you're doing like all of your planning and stuff, you can pause time. That's good. You can pause time and lay out where you want everything. And it's like and it's still gonna take time for like your units to gather resources and to build things yeah. and all of that. But you Low can look around and figure out <laughs> oh, what your, your your strategy is. And yeah, and oxygen is another resource that you have to worry about. Because that's the whole, like, the lore behind this game is this toxic mist that turns people into what they call horrors. Oh, my, oh my lord. And is so, this the frost punk of tower defense? Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think it's, I, that's the thing, though, Huber. I think it's less intense than you would expect. Okay. I think it's made to be a little bit more the open fact and, that, and friendly. Yeah, this map is showing, like, only one one choke point which is nice because like hey just focus on this this spot yeah i don't know how that evolves because know. like I'm when sure. he built another wall on the side yeah. then he the second night they came at him from both sides okay okay um another thing that you have access to um is uh blueprints and so like when you make a structure or whatever you can create a blueprint and so then that way you don't have to necessarily rebuild the whole thing every time and you can even share blueprints with other players. That's cool. That's so friendly. Um, but the the thing is, is that like, they still want it to be like custom and not look like cookie cutter. And so like here with this terrain, like you can put your blueprint down, but it's not going to fit necessarily where all those steps are. So, so you have to build a foundation. You have to build a foundation to kind of ah. augment it and 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 put it all together. Cool. Uh, I wonder and support if there's it. gravity. Like, would part of it fall down? I wonder. Yeah, I don't know if it's that part of it would fall down or if it just like wouldn't let you like complete that until you've given it enough support structure. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, another thing is uh, they're talking about the importance of verticality. Verticality. So your units uh, have more or less effectiveness depending on the height that they are at. So mm. archers are better from a high vantage point, and they're saying like lobbers are more like ground level soldiers. Um, and then you have a cannoneer uh, where they had to like clear space on one of their towers. Is there friendly fire with your cannoneer? Whoa. Can you take out your own troops? I don't know. Okay. Uh, and with, so with the cannoneer, it's like they had to have like a window in the tower, but then they also had to have like a flat space because you needed like a good like four like two by two square um, for them to have space mm. to uh, to set up. So it's like it's interesting because it's like. You know, this is not really the type of game that I, I get into that much, but I love tower defense. Just plug. watching them, you know, build and show off all the systems and stuff. Like it yeah. does seem like it's it's pretty cool, and it will be one to keep an eye on. For A sure. cool spin on the yeah. genre for sure. Interesting take for sure. Yeah. Uh, they say it's a 30-hour campaign. Whoa. Uh, plus creative survival and skirmish modes. Jeez. Jeez, a week. Uh, and that'll be on Steam uh, July 16th. Nice. Just out. I think so. Hmm. I could have just not written, written down, but I think it's out then. Sounds good. Uh, sounds Undermine good. 2. Undermine, okay. Freaking MinMax was just telling me about Undermine 1, and now oh. I need Got it. to play this game. How did I miss this? I blame you, chat. <laughs> you wow. kept this I game I didn't know about secret. Undermine 1 either. I was looking at Why this, did you not tell me about this? came up at the end, and I'm like, what? <laughs> Why did game? you keep it a secret? <laughs> it makes me think of the the villain at the end of The Incredibles when he's like, "You, I am beneath you, but nothing is beneath me. <laughs> yeah, I am yeah, the yeah. Underminer. Yeah. This looks 
so up my alley. I am so in for this game. I am, I'm going to play one. Just I'm, I probably won't finish it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive into one to just see what it's all about. Because uh, this one's co-op. And oh. like that, the idea of just like a co-op chill stream of this sounds so. Yeah. I'm fun. in, dude. I'll, I'll yeah, pretty and shoot. pretty big sprites. It looks like it zooms yeah. in and out quite the a bit. Visuals, too. the roguelite elements. Like I'm, I'm ready to fully get addicted to this one. Yeah, Undermine Two. <laughs> they look like such fun little characters. Like <laughs> <this too. laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every review and everyone that talks about Undermine One is just like it's impossible to stop playing. Huh. This, nice. is the, this is the most addicting game. Like, nice. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Fun co-op dungeon crawler. It's always, it always, like, our job is to pay attention to games. Yeah. And it always just blows my mind when there's a game yeah, that, that we haven't heard of. heard of at all, but also one that's, like, Thanks, Chad. incredibly popular. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like, how did that slip through? Because I've heard of most games, yeah. I'd say. You when know. a big one like that comes along, it's like, wait, I, I haven't even heard of Like, I've heard of, of What the Car. Yeah. 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 Which is next. What the car? Go ahead and play it. Uh, they put out a demo last night, so I played through that too. Um, so if you're not familiar <laughs> with What the Car, uh, it is from the makers of What the Golf and What the Bat. Yep. And it's just these crazy, <laughs> quick, fun, ridiculous little physics levels. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the huge legs are so good. And kind of like with WarioWare, oh. it's like when you click on a level, like you don't really know what you're going to get. And then it's like as soon as you pop out of the cannon, <laughs> then it like gives you the title of the level. And it's like, okay, you know, it's like uh, Office chair legs. car oh, with legs. Car with really long legs. So funny. Car with jumps. <laughs> Kari Poppins with an umbrella. <laughs> Kari Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a carp when you have a fish tail. There's car on office chairs, and you're like, what well, cars have wheels with different. But no, physic, the yeah, physics yeah, of being yeah. on office chairs mm-hmm. feels very different. <laughs> the car with heels. Yeah, car and heels. Uh, there was uh, some that was just like a Hot Wheels, like. You're just like doing loops and stuff like that and twists. Awesome. Flips uh, and shit. And then uh, there's one where it's like, I'm just like, suddenly I'm like having to chop veggies. Yeah. I'm mean, like, I'm like chopping a carrot. And it's like, if I, it, but I had to like slice it because there's like a certain number of each ingredient that you needed in the basket. And so you had to slice it without slicing too deep in and making too big of a piece. <laughs> it was like weirdly one of the hardest things was just chopping the vegetables. Mm-hmm. It's tough. Uh, and then they're like little bonus things to find and like harder to reach parts of, the, of each level. But like so many of these levels, it's like getting that gold thing is like beat it in like less than 45 seconds or something like that. They just go by really quick. So it's mm-hmm. just like one crazy idea after another. It's like car on a bike with a jet pack, you know? <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> Uh, but finally, so this has been out on Apple Arcade for a while. Um, I think it actually won an award somewhere for a best mobile cool. game. Cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, it's coming to PC on September 5th. Nice. So free from the from the Apple Looks fantastic. subscription. All right, Hebert, it's your turn. Darkest Dungeon 2 Kingdoms Mode. Dude! <laughs> this looks insane! <laughs> this looks so good! This is an entirely new mode to play Darkest Dungeon 2, one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, it's still not console release. I'm sure it's coming. Patience. I'm sure it's coming. Smaller team, uh, Red Hook. Uh, this, so... The Darkest Dungeon community has come around to Darkest Dungeon 2, but there's still a lot of players that prefer Darkest Dungeon 1 because 1 and 2 are dramatically different games. Mm -hmm. Uh, When they were making 2, they specifically said, they were like, we don't want to do the same game again. We want them to be just different and kind of coexist. This entire mode is a kind of a throwback to the Darkest Dungeon 1 style about okay. building your roster, you can lose your your troops, you can upgrade your in so there's like a little more permanence with the with the map uh and it's just this giant free mode with all these new enemy types. They're they're even bringing I'm, back I'm going to make sure people heard that. It's a whole new mode is free. B- free. Completely free to campaign. Free. Kingdoms. Huge yeah. looking mode to get invested in and just spend like 50 hours probably, <laughs> uh, you know, just dying and losing over and over again. Um, I'm so excited though. They even, they even brought back some enemies from like the Darkest Dungeon 1 DLC, mm, nice. which I think is a cool callback. Um, 
And I, I can't get enough of Darkest Dungeon 2. Uh, I love that game so much. So the idea that there's in a completely new way to play the game and all these new enemy types and another thing to just get like so invested and lost in is just a dream come true. I'm, I'm so excited. I was not expecting it. I was fully expecting, because they were hyping up that they were going to be at the AAA initiative, I was like, oh, guaranteed console release date and like the Hound Master, like one new class from, from the old ones or something. Sure, sure. I was like, no. We have a full on game mode. So very excited. Can't wait to stream it. 10 out of 10 hyped. Looks sick. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, we have a brand new game announcement. Uh, Rakugaki, uh, which is name. spelled R-K-G-K. Yeah. Uh, kind of going back to like Furikuri. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so this is a Mexican uh, dev team. Uh, and uh, they do say anime-inspired, uh, but it's very uh, based on graffiti. So they showed, in the showcase, they showed a like cinematic trailer. And so, yeah, it's like you put graffiti out on the wall in the world in different places, but then you also use graffiti <laughs> for attacks, and you use it as like a, kind of like a jetpack, just oh, blasting around sweet. the world in, in like really oh, acrobatic yeah. moves and stuff. Uh, what's wild is they didn't release any gameplay videos, hmm. but I, I gave John, they gave me like a handful of GIFs <laughs> that show like loops of little tiny bits okay. of gameplay. All right. Uh, and uh, yeah, this game, it looks pretty cool, pretty wild. It's like Whoa. you're s- s- zipping around big arenas. Like there's like a Tony Hawk looking skate park here yeah. with just lots of like big old or bullets flying around, the shock waves looks on cool. the ground. Uh, there's something that she's like, some drone or something that she's grabbing onto to like float around a little bit. Splatoon vibes, like covering the ground, Bloodworth with paint. yeah. She's she's leaving a trail of, of yeah. uh, spray paint everywhere that she's going. Uh, so I think that's just part of you getting around. Uh, and then yeah, Don, show some of these others. There's definitely like a lot of like bullet hell stuff going on in here too, like mm-hmm. kind of Returnal vibes. With just like the big waves of orbs going around everywhere. Good game. Orbs. Easy orbs. Game of the year. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got like got, like one quote here because again, this is like first time seeing this stuff. Uh, chain really together cool. jumps, dashes, glides, and grinds as you master the fluid and kinetic platforming action, master routes, and push through enemies like a true rebel to take down B Corp with speed and style. B Corp, take them out. Yeah. Sweet. Um, so yeah, I want to see more of this. Yeah, it's a pretty mm. cool, crazy looking game. The music will be key. The music yeah. will be key. Uh, with a lot of the stuff they're showing, the amount of precision, the controls will be absolutely key. Mm-hmm. Um, you do not want to have to deal with a bunch of orbs. Kind of looks like that game Fury and Shockwit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that kind of thing without having very, very precise, agile controls. Yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, something like um, Sunset Overdrive. Yeah, is yeah. what sure, really sure, like sure, sure, sure. gives me the the vibes, like a mix of that and Jet Set Radio. Shout out. Yeah. What was the stat on that? They made like seven dollars or something. Remember on which one? Sunset Overdrive. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know. <laughs> seven dollars. It was some insane thing there. Shiver. Yeah. Um, we don't really have much new here to show, but Cat Quest Three. They showed off the opening animation. Yes! <laughs> it's coming in the summer. It is coming! They reminded us that it exists. Yes, the jump from Cat Quest 1 to 2 was very nice, so I am anticipating a similar jump in quality with 2 to 3. Uh, 2 obviously added co-op. They added the doggo, so you could be a cat and a dog. Um, these games, like, we can we can meme about it. You cannot take me seriously, whatever, but I promise you they are so fundamentally sound and addicting. Like, the RPG progression in these games is really nice. Just this this really easy, comfy, forgiving grind, uh, where the grind is a pleasure. You know, you're going into little dungeons, you're finding loot, you're getting armor and weapons. It's just so, like, 
playable in short bursts, but it's also this big epic adventure. So it really, it really, you know, hits that that sweet spot of being able to get super invested, uh, but also just playing in short bursts. Looks jolly. Yeah, I love Cat Quest. It's so much fun. Yeah, and the pirate ship. Now that the, they've added the pirate ship's yeah. the big one in this one for sure. Uh, expect many puns. <laughs> of which Cat Quest has so many cat puns. <laughs> uh, but I swear these games are really, really solid. Uh, even just like the combat, you know, there's a lot of like dodging. You know, you're dodging, you're just, it's like almost a beat em up, but you still need to kind of like dodge out of the way and kind of manage your, your mana moves. So just, just a really comfy, wholesome time, Cat Quest. Nice. Uh, also, just kind of like a reminder that this exists, we got another little gameplay snippet of uh, Hyperlight Breaker. Oh, yeah. Um, which I've been uh, looking forward to for a while. Um, really liked Hyperlight Drifter, mm-hmm. really liked Solar Ash. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and this one they're doing. The, do you remember this thing, Kiva, where they're talking about the systems? No. Uh, There's a big part of like why the game's taking so long because it kind of like re engineered it. So it's like. Every time that you you die, it like regenerates the entire open world. Yeah, that was insane. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it's gonna be wild. Uh, with this, they're really just focusing a little bit more on the combat and showing like one of these mini bosses. Yeah. Uh, this is going into early access in the summer. Oh, um, I thought it was already. Nope, I haven't got to play it yet. Oh. When did they announce this? Oh, a while back. A while, yeah. while back. Yeah. Before okay. Solar Rash even came out, I think. Yeah. Okay. Settle in. Settle in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but what is out, well, at least in early access, Laysara Summit Kingdom. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you remember this. Uh, it's like a Mountaintop village. Yeah, thing. city builder, but like on mountain slopes. Oh. So there's like yeah. all of these very specific challenges to have to be aware of. This one was interesting to me. Figuring out how to navigate I'm interested in bridges this. and transportation, yeah. Yeah. And avalanches, Dude. And all of that. Yeah. Looks really neat. Looks so cozy. Yeah, we visually, need more it's Dawn. Gorgeous. Hype check, Dawn. Yeah, Dawn. Yes, it looks avalanches. Stunning. It looks absolutely Dude, stunning. Dude, that is the yeah. bridge. Beautiful. Whoa. This looks awesome. Gabby's in, too. Yeah. You want to know what else? This game is being made by three people. How three is that people? possible? It's How is game every game quite made okay by... games? Quite okay. <laughs> I feel like a game is made by one to three people or one to two thousand people. <laughs> 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 it's like, what's going on? Yeah, look at this crazy bridge. Like, <laughs> man, bananas. I don't know that I could live in a village <laughs> like that. I'd be very afraid. <laughs> uh, awesome. That looks cool. But yeah, grab that on early access or take a look at it a little deeper. Sweet. Um. Next up, we have uh, Wizard of Legend 2, which they had announced before, but I think they just had like a cinematic trailer or something. So this is really like one of the first times they've shown it in action, in gameplay. Yo, water bending, air bending. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's, yeah. Off there's two six, <laughs> two. six elements that your, your wizard gets different Yo, powers fire from. Bender. Uh, so yeah, you've got your fire, ice, wind, water, and uh, I think the sixth is chaos. Chaos brains. Um, Chaos. They, this is one of the ones that they had a, Hades a, a, energy. a yeah. demo of afterwards, after the showcase, so you could watch them play a little bit longer mm. uh, and get more of a breakdown. But the... Uh, breakdown! Uh, the, I don't like that song. Which one? Breakdown! The overall, it's like... <laughs> I'm really tired. <laughs> do we have any tea? <laughs> we do. Really? Yeah. Uh, Gabby, can can Isla get a tea? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to get me a tea. <laughs> Twisted tea. I'll go get one. But on it's sort of, it, you know, it is a roguelike. Um, it is sort of, I, I think it's it's definitely got elements of both. I love uh, roguelikes Hades, so much. Never uh, and uh, Rogue Legacy too. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Speaking my language, Bloodworth. Yeah. Big so, time. So it's top down. Um, and then uh, with slight technical difficulty here on the, yeah. the, 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 the stream. But... Uh, You've got, I'm trying to remember how they, so they've got, you've got like a basic attack uh, that, that there's different, like, uh, I think the two there, so it's like ice blades and then like like quick fireball. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, you've got your your signature arcana. Uh, and the two that we saw there was, was lightning throws and ice blasts. 
Um, and then uh, those have like a little bit of a cooldown, but you can use them pretty frequently. Sweet. And then you have what they called, which I don't understand why it's named this way. They, they called standard arcana, which are like bigger spells. Uh, and so those have like longer cooldowns on them and it's like mm. that's like that big earth shock wave and stuff that you saw going out because then yeah. like tarot would be the major arcana which would be the bigger one yeah yeah i'm not sure like the naming but um when you uh but like similar to uh rogue Lessie, when you die you don't actually come back you pick another name wizard you know with mm. different attributes and stuff so <sighs> <laughs> I need to play, I need to so play again. Good, I need to go back. It's so good. It's been a minute. It's been too Great long. Great music, too. Oh. Overlooked video game. Yeah. Highly Buried. overlooked. Uh, Brutally overlooked. Not nominated for a single thing. Devastatingly overlooked. Uh, Wizard of Legend 2 has four player co op. Mm, that's as well. sick. So. Gauntlet style. That's sweet. Yeah. Sets uh, it apart from Hades as well, yeah. which is nice. Well, and especially if it has like if the elements kind of like commingle and work together and stuff, that that could be cool. Yeah, yeah, they actually, yeah, they're they're like, yeah, th- things that you can combine a little bit there here and there. Um, you can also like, um, you can upgrade your your different arcana and stuff. And then he's showing too, like he would find things in the chests and and have you know decide whether he would want to swap them out like while he was out on a run. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are also like NPC wizards out there that you can kind of help, and then they'll give you rewards. Uh, like in addition to the regular mini bosses and stuff, there was like, there's like this big, um, like spiked chest, and it was firing off all kinds of spells and had the huge life bar like a boss life bar, um, and so like just like fighting a chest essentially to get the reward that's inside of it. Nice. Uh, and then uh, Damiani might like this. Uh, the mini bosses and bosses have a stagger meter nice. oh. uh, underneath their health bar. So if you get that Good. stagger meter all the way up, classic. Get some free hits. Yep. Poise damage. Mm-hmm. Nice. Love poise damage. Block meter. Shout out to Jedi Survivor. That's a good game. Yeah. <laughs> and then the uh, the one boss that they showed was like this this big old troll with like mushrooms growing out of his back, swinging oh. a tree around. Oh, so. I like that. Last of Us. Yeah. Bloater. Bloaters. Huber, I don't know if you're familiar with this. No. Streets of Rogue 2. Yeah, it's a game I should love, but I don't. <gasps> really? Actually, the first one, yeah. Um, Streets of Rouge? Yeah, I couldn't I remember saying that. super get into the first one. So I don't know. Like, Jumping uh, from car to boat is cool. Like, uh, you know, River City. I know, I know. I should. <laughs> everything about this game Riding I should be obsessed for people that with. For aware of what happened. <sighs> Yeah, so there was just a little. There were too many systems in the first one maybe. where I got super uh, overwhelmed. Because it sounds like they really want you to be able to do like anything. Yeah, it's just gigantic yeah. Sa- sandbox, and what was procedurally it? generated showdown? map, which I could see could go good or bad. You what know? is that game, Blood? Hawaii Showdown? Showdown Hawaii? It's like River City and like I, this. I vaguely know what you're. Yeah, I, I've version. tried so hard to get into these, and I. I have have not been able to, and just all these menus and numbers and items and right. craft. There's just so much. Like here. this, this just makes me be like, I should get back into Dwarf Fortress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah. they're like saying like even like the way you can play. Like I I wrote down just like a few of the the, the different r- jobs that you can have. Like mm-hmm. there's like a hacker, a chef, a wrestler, a werewolf, yeah. a ninja. There's an alien, a bil- a an investment things. banker. What's your job? Like, yeah. Oh, I'm a werewolf. <laughs> so full time? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine to five. And, and like what the, what that shot they just like PM. threw a barrel in and, and gorillas popped out of it. <laughs> like what are they doing then? There's, there's just cool. like a lot of wacky stuff for yeah. sure. So yeah, I can see how like maybe if there's like a lack of focus, it's just so there's like oh cool you can do anything, but maybe it's not necessarily always mm-hmm. fun. It <laughs> looks really good though. Like yeah, it, it looks, looks like a big time evolution of the first one. So if you love the first one, I bet people are freaking out about this one. Yeah, I could see a game like this having a high learning curve, and then like once, it, yeah. once you get it, you're yeah. like you, I could see you spending a lot yeah. of time. Because to be like fair, that. when I hopped into one, it wasn't the game I was expecting. Right now, yeah. I know right. what to expect. Right. I remember that, like when we yeah. when we went into it just expecting it to be a beat 'em up. Yeah, and it was this insane thing with all these systems. I remember yeah. you bouncing off of that. Yeah. Um. 
Oh yeah, this thing. Thirty three immortals. Sick. Uh, we got to see some gameplay on this guy. Thirty three. Um, I had forgotten that this game existed, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And it was like it, it Who's was making this one. This is Thunder Lotus. Uh, they did uh, Jotun and Spirit Fair. That's Yotun. right, Spirit Fair people. Uh, and this is a co op roguelike with thirty three players. Wow. Um, so that rad. I forgot about that element. That's yeah. so rad. And you can Crazy. see points on here too, where like people are comboing attacks. It's like mm. somebody sets up a thing, and then there's two points for like other players to hop in and and join whatever thing that they're casting or whatever. Torture chambers. Um, but uh, yeah, they essentially talk about it being like a pick up and play version of like an MMO raid. You know, essentially. The concept is it's cool, incredible. Yeah. I love the idea of just being able to group up in this kind of setting with a ton of people. Like you were just saying, like a, like a raid, the mini yeah. raids going on. Love yeah, a reliquary also. Yeah. I love how like there's a shot in here with like t- a two treasure chests, and each one of them has like three players working yeah. together to unlock the chest. I think as the game looks so intimate, like you know, you're kind of you're in there. Combat looks like really focused, but then there's also 33 players. Like that's it's a cool balance. Yeah, what's interesting about that is I haven't seen too many shots where it looks like there's that many people on screen. Well, they were just showing a map, which was interesting, and there were people out. spread yeah, out. There's... So what I think there could be some cool emergent moments in this where like yeah. you and three other people are working on a giant skeleton, and then like six people roll in and help you kill it. Like that could be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. lots of those like uh, little little path markers <laughs> and stuff throughout. We're so used to four-player co-op, you know? It's either, like, four players yeah. or, like, a big, like, Battlefield 64 MMOs, like, hundreds, whatever, but Well, that boss looked like the camera zoomed way out, too, so it's, like, there must be moments that are, like, okay, everyone beat all the parts of this level, now converge yeah. on the main boss. Yeah. The boss room has opened or yeah, something. Yeah, you divide here. and conquer, and then I'm, you all come yeah. together yeah. for the boss. And I'm yeah. sure that there'll be, like, notices, like, okay, like, yeah. something has happened in the Northwest or whatever that everyone has Very to Very cool idea. Or something like that. That's neat. Yeah, and here they've got a closed go. beta coming uh, to sign up for here May 24th. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Here, what do you mean? Here we go. I saw the next trailer. Cute. Oh, here yep. we go. Yeah, V Rising. Yep. Here we go. Here Legacy we go. of Castlevania update. Jesus. What do you What do you hear? You talking about? <laughs> they'll do. They'll They're do anything. It out to anybody yeah, except exactly. themselves yep. to make a game. They'll except do any. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm like skipping this out of general principle and protest. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Just make a game. Straight up. <laughs> I'm skipping it out of protest. Yep. So this is coming uh, May 8th alongside the 1.0 release of V-Rising. I mean, it looks cool. V-Rising looks sick as hell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) We played V-Rising, didn't we? I don't remember. Uh, I feel like somebody's played V-Rising, but I don't know if we've ever streamed it. I can't, uh, I can't remember for sure. I mean, this this, looks this area looks cool. The yeah. Col- I like the rich, deep colors. It looks The sick. deep, rich colors. Yeah, and the, the architecture. Yeah. yeah. So there's a couple of things going on here. So uh, you're seeing here, this, the trailer starts off with, like, Dracula basically just chilling in the castle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you start to see some of these other characters uh, that they've got in there. Maria, um, it looks like. But then, uh, and yeah, Flea Man. Flea Man! Is in there, <laughs> uh, of all things. Uh, but then uh, there is the battle with Simon Belmont. Simon Belmont comes knocking. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, Oh, he doesn't knock. <laughs> uh, and, uh, oh yeah, turning into the wolf is another one of the things, too, that, that's, that's there. But... So if you defeat Simon Belmont, then you can get the secrets of his iconic weapon. Um, and it seems like that fight and, and reward are free. All this other stuff Pay is, up. yeah, $20 cosmetic pack. Hmm. So you, for that, uh, you get the, the castles based on Castlevania. Uh, you can get to traverse the open world with the soul of the wolf. Don Alucard's outfit. Uh, embody uh, Maria uh, to move unnoticed among the realms of man. Bring your Castlevania <laughs> fantasy to life, because that's all it is now is just a fantasy. It is a fantasy. Yeah. Castlevania um, never existed. Uh, yeah. Or springs of the air as the mischievous flea man. 
You could play as Flea Man? Yes. That's sick. <laughs> <laughs> That's sick. Move unnoticed through the realms of man. <laughs> I, would, I would take that power. So cool. uh, and then there's two uh, songs uh, to all on for the castle. Uh, Simon's Theme and Bloody Tears. Both. Bloody uh, Tears, dude. Uh, re- all right, I'm buying it. That's an all-time. Protest uh, over. <laughs> Protest <laughs> over, dude. Uh, I'll just play you Bloody Tears on YouTube later. Yeah, reimagined by uh, the V-Rising composer. So. Ah, uh-huh, here we go. Well, I, I, like I say, glass half full. It's got a pulse. Castlevania's got, got a, a pulse. pulse. Got a, signs of There's, life. Oh, signs of life. Proof of life. There's always <laughs> hope. It's it's wheezing and coughing up yes. dust coming out of the crawl space yeah. under yeah. the house. Yeah, but it's it's there. <laughs> nice. So yeah, so that wasn't everything from Triple I, but that was a. My highlights. Great stuff, Blood yeah, Earth. Some, Great some stuff. Good stuff there. A lot of bangers. Yeah. That yeah. was a heck of a... Triple I, dude. Yeah. Uh, for how quickly that thing moved, too, and how short it was. Yeah, that was one of my criticisms. A little too like, quick. There's too many things for Break a 45-minute showcase. Like, I would have rather, like... Because, like, I had to go back and watch 33 Immortals before I even remembered what yeah. it was. It just, like, was in and out that fast. And, like, oh, yeah, 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 this game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like... 45 I minutes, though, also feels like a sweet spot for the collective streamers. Where it's, it's a good, like 45 it's a good minutes length. goes by and you're not fatigued whatsoever. You yeah. start you start going over an hour and yeah, yeah. then I feel like a little more criticism, a little more fatigue starts to go down. Sure. Where it's like you're in and out, boom. It's, yeah. a, it's a good length. It's just like with a lot of these indie showcases, especially like when you get into Wholesome. And Wholesome you know, I was yeah. thinking of Wholesome. Don and I and Damiani and I have reacted to Wholesome over the years and it's just like... You get so many games, like, they yo. start to blend together. And it's like yes. three hours long yeah. and you're just yeah. like, yo, this is the 16th <laughs> witch with a yep. frog farming game. <laughs> yep. And I just need, I need an aperitif here. I need a sorbetto. Yeah. Cleanse my palate for a and minute. So I, I was getting a little bit of that with the city builders and the roguelikes. <laughs> With this one, you know. Hannibal, yeah. dude. Sorry, we're going off on Yeah, Hannibal we're going off over quick. here, bud. Yeah. We're losing our goddamn mind. Yeah, <laughs> that, was a lot of, that was a lot of content there. A lot of good stuff, <laughs> Yeah, bud. I'm excited. Great day for video games. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Got the BAFTAs. Yeah, it's been a good day Got here. triple Easy eyes on. going. <laughs> yeah. Free Darkest Dungeon content. What more could you ask for? Just an actual Castlevania game. <laughs> an actual Castlevania game. Yeah, yeah that yeah. is. That's, yeah, I, I would ask for that. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay, we've got more to come. Uh, but if you've been enjoying the show so far, please take a second to like and subscribe and ring that bell on YouTube. It helps us and it helps you stay connected. And now, a word from our sponsors. Selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing. However, you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. I love that Shopify is there to grow with you no matter what stage you're in and no matter what size you're in. However big you want to get, Shopify is there to take you all the way. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the United States, and Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash allies, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash allies now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. S-H-O-P-I-F-Y dot com slash allies, shopify.com slash allies. And if you are a patron of Easy Allies, thank you. I'm willing to bet my life the next time we see Castlevania... It'll be a character in Dead by Daylight. Mm. Dracula <laughs> in Dead by Daylight. Hey, 
Could be. Yep. I don't know how they would get a Belmont or somebody in there who would be a survivor, but... <laughs> I mean, those are just skins anyway. We'll see, we'll see. You have a They're not. Flea Man. They have oh, no, they names, have abilities, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Maria, you could put a Maria and, and uh, the Belmonts in there as survivors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they'd be like OP. You couldn't do El- you couldn't do Alucard. He'd be OP. But you could you could balance, you know. They're Balancing hum- they're a Belmont would be a little tricky, I think. But. Yeah, they're humans yeah. though, mostly by and Alucard. Large. But the map has sunlight. Or, oh no, that doesn't make sense because Alucard can walk in the sun. <laughs> oh, <you're> a daywalker, <laughs> yeah, daywalker. You're a flea man. Flea, <laughs> you're yeah. a flea yeah. man, and day by daylight, yeah. that's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> you have to jump walk. Uh, Huber, uh, I know you haven't got a lot of time in this yet, but so tell brief. us about Save Your List. You got like an hour in or so? Mm, barely, not even. Okay. So brief. This came out this week or last week. Yeah. Um, 2D action platformer. Um, I haven't really got into the like Metroidvania-ness of it. I don't even know if it is like Metroidvania. Uh, the beginning is really slow. That's why I'm uh, I'm bummed I'm talking about it today and not next week. Because I hardly even got to combat, really. Mm, okay. uh, the premise is storytelling, which I really like. The the there are these, you know, b- like what's the word I'm looking for? They look like they're gods or something. I guess there's like these godlike people talking about stories and like what it means. What what is a story? What is the meaning of a story? And okay. it's like the the person is like, yeah, the narrator has complete control over the story, and we don't want the hero to win. But then the other person is like, they're like, what good is a story if the hero doesn't prevail? Uh, and then you like play as this this character, and the goal is to get to this island and to become a savior, which I don't even really know what that entails yet. Um, the art style is really nice. It controls very well. The beginning, though, for a little while, is very simple puzzles. You know, you're flipping levers, you're pushing boxes, um, you're avoiding like spikes and enemies. What I didn't really know was that there are multiple playable characters. Oh, ah. I got to a second playable character that was just like this weird floating. Beast type character, and then all of a sudden, then all of a sudden, I was like clawing things, uh, clawing this like boss enemy, and the they had, there was history there. Like the story and the art style have me committed. Also, I've heard this game is pretty short; it's like four or five hours. Mm. Um, so yeah, just the feel of it, the feel of this game is my jam because it's very melancholic. Mm-hmm. Like there is a sadness to this game and what is going on. Yeah, there's some freakos in here. There's some good yeah. freakos. Uh, so I'm excited to play more. I just I just barely tasted it. Yeah, that's where I was at. That's the part I did, that boss. Uh, you know, just kind of a Mega Man style where the boss is like rolling at you sideways. You do enough damage, then all of a sudden they'll start like rolling up and down, trying to attack you. Um, but yeah, just a, just a unique look and an emphasis on this mysterious story. Hmm. Have me committed. It looks it, for some reason it looked like the missing to me. Hmm. The yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, which I love that game. I wish I could talk about it more, but that's uh, you know after an hour that was pretty much all I did. Just yeah. Move some boxes, pull some levers. <laughs> but again, uh, I feel like it's going to escalate because of what I've seen pre-release, uh, and then just like where I where I ended up playing as that character with like clawing enemies so yeah i'm excited to see how it evolves and then obviously the big thing will be how the story connects because it is it is just really cool and somber about like this you know the the definition of what a story is and what we want out of a story because that's like you know part of being a human we love stories so excited to explore that nice yep now let's talk about why you didn't get to play more of that game. Yeah, let's. Because please. you've been oh my chomping God. at the bit to talk about Bellatro or oh. Balatro or whatever it is. We finally got you. I finally ah. I finally played this. Since you started, I started. Ah. And I finally beat it last night. And I played a shitload of it. <laughs> Goaty! No, I, yo. I love poker. I love gambling. I love cards. I love card games. I love roguelikes. This is all of those things <laughs> together. I was so confused when you seemed like uninterested in playing. Well, because I kept wanting to stream my first play of it, 
And it just like hadn't worked out because I was like working on other things. I've been watching my grandpa for the last two weeks. I'm watching him for like three more weeks. So I wasn't able. Oh, I haven't seen that card. <laughs> I was wondering about those. I was like, dude, there's two like planet cards. Um, okay, so this game <laughs> is the most addicting game of the year. Yeah. This is quintessential one more run, one more run, mm -hmm. one more run. Yeah. Until your eyes bleed. Until your eyes bleed. Uh, it has the best economy of the year so far, without a doubt. Uh, it is poker for like one round, and then it becomes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then it becomes just madness and chaos. And how do I stack this deck to score a billion points? Yeah, because yeah, it, it is is score multiplier the game. Yes, in a lot of different dimensions. Um, so. The poker element is basically just the familiarity with the cards, the basic cards, the yep, yep. Uh, and the hands, right? So you get your straights and your flushes mm -hmm. and your full house and all of that. Mm -hmm. But it's like even like your quote unquote opponents aren't really opponents. Yeah. You're you're just fighting to hit a goal yeah. score. Yeah. With things that are there's, gonna like screw with your head. There's bosses with, with like modifiers, yeah. but it's not like a literal boss. Like it's, one of the last ones I did was like. You can only play this one kind of hand. So yeah. like what, whatever oh, yeah, you, you start off with, you just have to do that yeah. for the rest of that round. Yeah. And you get a yeah. limited number of hands yep. and a limited number of discards. Yeah. And so, those can be increased in different ways. Yes. So let me sell you on this game. If you're like, I don't like cards. Like, first up, this is one of the highest reviewed games of the year. If you love games, you should at least be curious mm -hmm. <laughs> about it from the jump. Like, this is this is taking the world by storm, straight up. Yeah, I mean, uh, to that point, again, I played it only because everybody's playing exactly. it. Exactly. You're playing it, so we're going to talk about it, so yeah. I decided to jump in. Amazing, bud. I don't play a lot of card games. There are some that I've gotten into in the past. Yeah. But I picked this up, and then it's like, oh, it's four hours later. This was this game is just time <laughs> well, travel, I, I guess. The music, <laughs> bud, the, so the main theme song is incredible. I'm addicted. But... The, I think a sell to to you if you're not into cards is that each run is self-contained. Mm -hmm. This is not about collecting a million cards and then fine-tuning that deck and trying to make this... It's like you're making your deck each run, so I feel like that huge level of like grind and crafting and all of that is really streamlined because like every game you play, you get to a shop and it's like, okay, I just have a couple choices here. What am I gonna do? Okay, right. next shop, okay, a couple choices. It's not overwhelming at all. My other cell, Robo Damiani. We just lost Damiani. Hmm. I don't know what's huh? going on. Oh. What'd you do? Damiani's back, amazing. My other cell is that the amount of strategy here it is it exceeded my expectations. I'm blown away by how many different types of uh, decks I had. Yeah. Just every time I play one, it's like, okay, I, I got this card and this card and this card this time. I'm going to focus on three of a kind. Then I just started playing like three of a kind, three of a kind, three of a kind, and it was scoring huge points. Then I had another deck where it was like, if you play spades and if you play face cards, you get extra points. I had a card where it was like, every card you play is considered a face card. So it was like huge points going on. So just the amount of strategy is streamlined so well where it doesn't feel overwhelming and that's my biggest sell on Bellatro and why it's so addicting. <laughs> uh, Bellatro or Balatro as the trailer says, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows what it is? This is going to be a Chocobo situation. Yeah. The, uh, the, Chocobo. Yeah, the, big, the big thing is, is the Jokers. The Jokers, yeah, Bloodworth, the, the, yes. Because there's a lot okay. of different types so of cards, but the Jokers but are the, so simple. the big deal. So you can yes. have up to five Jokers. Unless like, you get a card that can give you more. You can yeah, get yeah. more, yeah. But, but basically, like five Jokers. Yeah. And each one of these things will give you certain buffs, modifiers. Mm -hmm. And so it's like... It'll be like spade. any spade card is times four multiplier. Right. Like holographic will automatically like add... Yep, to, rare cards. To uh, your multiplier on your score. Yep. So that's the thing. It's like the points. So 
it's funny because it's like there's so many different layers. It's, but it's so simple, but it's, but yeah, yeah. But there's like a lot of different layers to like how you build up your yeah. points, and so it's like okay, the type of hand that you play. So like play two pairs. Yeah. Like that has a score associated mm-hmm. for playing that hand. Yep. And then you can level each of up your the cards hands. has a score that adds to it. Yep. Uh, but then there's also a multiplier, and the jokers can augment all of those different changing. things. Yeah. But then there are also like the these planet cards. You planet can, cards. You that can level, level up, up each hand. They'll give you more chips and more multiplier. There's arcana cards, which yeah. can completely stack your deck. It'll be like change three cards into spades. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of all my diamonds and make a whole deck of spades. And so now I'm playing flushes, straight flushes. It is. Yeah. Crazy, but like, then they also have all these. They create all these special types. He's of not going to let yeah. you do it. Just yeah. let him do it. I think. I think the biggest part is like, do you like strategy? And I think such a huge part of any, not any, but a large part of why humans love video games. There's a bunch of reasons. There's narrative. There's, uh, you know, uh, music. There's the visuals. Strategy is a big one, mm-hmm. and this game's strategy to me is a 10 out of 10. Whether you are a seasoned poker professional or you have never played a card game, I feel like you can pick this game up and feel like you're one card away from just breaking it and it's so rewarding, it's so satisfying when you do. Uh, it, I, I just I can't get enough and I'm squeezing in games just every every day, every night. It's, I, it's, I'm, it's, I'm gonna be playing this all year long. It's funny, Huber, because like I have this a giant pile of games that I want to play, and so like yeah. now I'm like so happy that like last because last night like I was like I I, I was like all right I'll do I, we're gonna talk about it on podcast I'll do like one run before I go to bed yeah and that was the run where I like fu- actually beat it yes. <laughs> like, I actually got yes. through all eight anti yeah so the progression the is actually really nice too because again you're not unlock well there are. Yeah. There's like 150 jokers. You unlock a lot, but you, you unlock don't build like a deck. 20 or 30 possibly, but all the other cards are in play from the jump, which I really appreciate. Again, this is not some BS Hearthstone crap where it's like, okay, well, I just don't have that card. I need to like grind and play and convert all my cards so I can make that one to make this perfect deck. It's like, no. Every run, self contained. Very little barrier to entry. Again, you can unlock those a little more powerful cards, but then that's also rewarding because it's like, yo, I've been playing, I've I've earned that card. And again, there's not many of those. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. And then you can unlock new decks as well. So it's just like just enough progression, just enough carrot on the stick to, you know, make it even more rewarding when you finish a run. Yeah, and the other decks they're like they're very specific things that like yeah. play into a strategy or not. Like I think one is like plus like you get extra um you can like hold extra cards. Yeah. Like one of them is like you hand. start with ten extra bucks. Yeah. I'm right. Like, Let's go. The, Cash yeah. run. And there's like all kinds of weird little strategies just <laughs> yeah. for the shop too. Oh where like my if God, you have be- more than five cash, then you get interest. You get interest. <laughs> so it's like, do I want to spend my money now? Do I wait? It's like there there is just co- there are constantly interesting decisions. Super, I had that a, is I had so a, satisfying. I think it was a joker um, where if I didn't use any discards, yes. it would give me like 10 bucks at yeah. the end of the, of the round. So fun. Yeah. My, one yeah. of my favorite jokers is the one where you get a 15, a 15 to your multiplier if you have no discards left. Yep. Mm. So just like, like, get rid of all yeah. yeah. But, then, like, I, but okay. then I got in his trouble with that one time where oh, I, was yeah, like, yeah. I was like trying to draw my flush and it's it a just trap. wasn't popping it's a up. Trap. Yeah. yeah, it's a trap. And then just other ones where it's like, yo, the longer you keep this joker, the more valuable it gets, but it doesn't give you any benefits yeah. other than money when you sell it. So it's like, oh, that's like clogging up a spot. Yeah. Do I just want to sell this now and get a different one? Like, it's just constantly asking you questions. And again, it's like, it's not out of a hundred, you know, there's not a hundred possibilities for that question. It's like, you have like three possibilities, four. So it's like, okay, which which of these I'm gonna do? But that happens every single round, every single round, every round. Yeah. It's like, okay, how about now? Okay, I got that one last round. So now this next one, I'm gonna start building on top of that. So it's just, yeah, it's so, so simple and fun. The one I won, won last night, Huber, I had um, 
two of my jokers were like basically like they just in- kept increasing in value the longer it went. Yeah. Because one, it would increase the multiplier for like every time I used the tarot card, but like that number would go up. It yes. would go up. You know, it was like go 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then the other one was uh, similar, but it was with planet cards. Love the planet cards. They're my favorite. They so, level up the hands specifically. But yeah. rather than it just like adding to the multiplier, it actually multiplied the multiplier. Whoa. So yeah. it's by and it increased by like 0. 0.1. It seemed like nothing at first for every planet card. Yeah. But then yep, once yep, you've yep. used like 20 planet cards, now it's doubling your multiplier yeah and so all of a sudden it's like oh you're those are really strong yeah anytime you can get like a 1.5 x yeah you're like i was at like a 2.2 2.3 times yeah after everything else had been added up yeah and it's like yeah and i needed that's the the only way i was getting because even then i was like i I was at that like a hundred thousand anti or whatever i'm like am i gonna get through this yeah this is pretty dodgy right now. I had like a 300,000 chip hand and I like forget how I even got it, but I like broke it so hard. <laughs> it was like, oh my God. Jason, uh, Jason sent me a clip of him playing in like, the after you beat it, you unlock more antis or whatever. Yeah. And like, he was in ante like 12 or 14 or whatever, when it gets insane. Ooh, yeah. And the, 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 the blind was like mi- something million. Yeah, right? yeah. And then he played a hand where it, he got like six billion <laughs> points, so and I was just like, okay, the like, numbers, man, the math <laughs> genius. Yeah, yeah that, I was like, okay, honestly, that, that's that's why I like uh, blackjack and and craps and other gambling games more because I've never been able to. I, I love poker, but I've always known that I'm at a disadvantage because of the odds and the probabilities and the numbers and stuff like yeah. that stuff is just a little harder for me in my brain you would be good at this game if like that skill is more important than your poker skill for this game math and numbers and it's like okay cuz cuz in, in such a fun way cuz <laughs> you can draw so it's like do I you know it, it, you get into such like tricky situations where it's like okay my hand I have eight cards in my hand and I have three spades, three diamonds, and a pair. Yeah. What am I going to do? What am I going to do here? Am I just going to play that pair and score shit and then try, hopefully, like, more, like, suited cards come up? Am I going to just discard everything except the three spades? It's like, what am I going to go for here? Then you're looking at your deck, and it's like, okay, what cards do I have left? You can get very punished for hope in yes, this game. Yes, yes. Like, but, but like all of a sudden, I, you have so I'm much one hope. card from a royal flush, yeah, like, blah, 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 and then you just lose. Lose, lose. You just <laughs> You're lose. Like, cool, yeah. cool. Because, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, you trick yourself into thinking mm-hmm. the odds must be in my favor. Mm-hmm. No, no. <laughs> yeah. But what's interesting here is, is, like, with some of those initial cards that we're, like, what we're talking about, like, that can shape... Big time. Where your strategy goes, like, how you yeah. approach oh, yeah. the run entirely, because... Hugely. Because... Like, you know, I was uh, like leveling up flushes yep. pretty well, which which hilariously, like when I first started the game the other night, yeah. I had forgotten like flushes were even a thing. It's like, oh yeah, I can do that. <laughs> yeah. um, and, but then it was like, okay, well, I'm going to keep leveling up flush as much as I can, Yeah. but then also using things to turn, because you can turn cards turn into, into wild yep. cards. Oh, the wilds. And so then you can use them with any yep. uh, suit, and it's just like... Okay, sick. If I've got a couple of like wild spades, yeah, and then one, two, three, four, I five. I stacked my deck so hard, blood, where I had like forty spades <laughs> and like twelve other. But then the game throws you a all, all spade, spade cards yeah. are debuffed, and then, and then you're dead. just dead. Then you're just dead. So you, you're just rolling the dice that that won't yeah. happen. Yeah, I started like I think I got like punished a couple of times, maybe by just the RNG of like what mm-hmm. blinds I got, but. Because yeah. I had I had a, a run where I was doing a bunch of I had a few wild cards. There were the aces, you know. They were like powerful cards, you know. They had some malts on them too, and then I got like every blind was like the diamonds are debuffed, the spades are debuffed, and that also debuffs wild cards yeah. because they count as that mm-hmm. suit. <laughs> and so like, like no. besides counting as every other suit, they also count as that suit, so it debuffs them. And yeah. I was like, okay, well, I'm just screwed. And yeah. I, I convinced myself that the game was like, being like, oh, you're leaning into suit, yeah. huh? Like, here, let me punish that. Well, and I'm like, I'm sure it's not doing what that. What was amazing is I had a similar situation, Isla, where it was like uh, face cards 
are you can't use face cards or whatever. Yeah. And then I had a Joker in my hand where it was like all your cards are face cards. Right. I've sold had the, that. Yeah. I sold the card. Mm. Ah. So I lost my Joker that was really making my combo that run incredible. I had to give it up for that boss fight. Because you saw what the blind was the going per, to be? The, or the, did you sell it during the... When you you can see what the boss yeah, uh, yeah, parameter yeah, 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 yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. So you sold, you so I sold that card. It's important to yeah. look ahead, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there's a thing too where you can re-roll what's in the shop or you can re-roll the bosses. Yeah. So I was like, if you see a boss coming up and you know that's yeah. not going to go well for you, then like... Yeah, because there's it. a joker you can keep on hand. Like one of those jokers that doesn't do anything where it's like, hey, if you sell this, you can dismiss the boss blind yeah you know and like that's just eating a slot but if you've leaned your entire yeah. thing into spades or whatever totally yeah then it's good to keep something like that also on another hand. huge sell for this game 14.99 14.99 and 14. like 14.99 60 megabytes yeah yeah 67 Four. megabytes it's like a Hours tiny ass little that's, game that's, that's, yeah. that's the real part of the addiction where it's like oh, you know cause you can be like oh you know I'll, I'll never just, delete I'll, un- I'll uninstall it's not a deterrent because you no. just click the button and it's ready to play. Yeah, never. It uninstall. downloads before you hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's crazy. Yeah, so fun. When I'm done watching my grandpa, I'll be streaming the hell out of this for sure. Valatreo, dude. Valatreo. What a game. <laughs> Damiani, I know. I just sent you the code recently. I don't know if you have you played it all yet. Not touched it, and I feel bad. I all of my card energy was spent Queen's on blood. Queen's Blood and Rebirth. <laughs> yeah. Queen's and Blood. I sh- I struggle with. I love it, but I struggled like seeing Huber and seeing like other people stream and solve those things way faster than I could. Yeah, I'm, I'm just and you saying like the math and stuff. I abhor doing math. math and video little games. I don't care math. how fun. You don't really have to do that. You don't, don't really like have. How, it'll give you just, a little bit just, of an edge. I always brute force that shit and like hope for the best. I'm Dude, like, well, Damiani, I'll keep. Bro. No, yeah, no, I, I don't, Damiani, yeah. no, I refuse. <laughs> Damiani, <laughs> there we go. I refuse. Damiani, Damiani, I don't chat, do math at all. Fucking, I promise you, chat wants to see you cheese the fuck out of this yeah. game. You're supposed to cheese. I am trying to unlock Korra shit in Fortnite. Stop. This game, we got Avatar stuff driving them. Damiani. Damiani. The whole point is and, uh, to cheese it. To get, play get Warframe with me, Damiani. <laughs> no, I'm playing Fortnite. Play Warframe with me. No, Fortnite. <laughs> Warframe. <laughs> Fortnite. <laughs> Seriously. Balotro. Yeah. Like, oh, dude. Archex. You would, you would be able to cheese the hell out of this. Oh, yeah. Out. It would be pure Or just do what I do. Get to anti-6 and lose. Yeah. And it's just fun. Yeah. Because you don't think things through and you just power up your two pairs and call it good. Yeah, I'm going mm-hmm. to be bugging you about this all year, Damiani. I'm going to need your uh-huh. take. I'm going to need your, your cheese take. Mm-hmm. Cheese. Scale of one to ten cheese. <laughs> <laughs> but the game wants you to cheese. It wants you to yes. cheese. It, I don't think Dami, Damiani gets his power mm. from when the game doesn't want him to cheese. Great point. If, yeah. the, game, if the game is, if the yeah. point of the game is cheese, it's not cheese. <laughs> You're right. It's You're just right. the chips. Yeah. Poker chips. Yep. Also Elevator. this week. Oh, the first patch is coming up as well. Sorry. The first patch is coming. New balance changes. New Joker cards. We're just getting started. Oh, baby. Yep. There's a demo out now for Rugrats. What? Adventures oh, in yeah. Gameland. Why Rugrats, does it look amazing? What does it look it amazing? Looks it looks legit. It looks really Holy freaking shit. good. Yeah. What? It looks like the show, literally. Yeah. Dude. Rugrats. Yeah, this this game is looking really good. What? Uh, and uh, Tommy Pickles, dude. Ledge. Not only this, but it, we'll get to it here in a second in the, in the trailer. Uh, there is a full-on 8-bit mode. And I and I think Limited Run is is putting out like an NES cartridge so you Holy can play God. it on NES. Oh, sick. Um, this yeah. sa- this this, this feels this is giving me like Toy Story on Genesis vibe. This looks incredible. Yeah, yeah. The the art style is just uh, on point. There. Oh! Yeah. yeah, and even the NES version looks really. Duck Tail. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah, this looks incredible. Yep. So, Did they just do this with the game though, and it wasn't the best? What was that? I don't know. Damiani, I think, played it. Yeah, there's the NES. Gargoyles. That was oh, Gargoyles. That was trash. Okay. But that was yeah. a re- yeah. This looks good. This is yeah. a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was Gargoyles yeah. OG. We knew OG yeah. Gargoyles yeah. was bad, yeah. so yeah. there's nothing new there. Okay, okay. And again, demo's out now. Go check out the demo. Demo. Then see what you think about it. Nice. Demo. Uh, SNK put uh, 20 classic games on GOG. 
Mm. Hey, uh, all right. So you can pick up uh, stuff like uh, Magician Lord, Metal Slug 4, Samurai Showdown 4, Sengoku. Wait, Magician Lord? That's the I'm Destined Just to Die game, isn't it? I think so. I'm <gasps> Destined yes. just Highway to straight to hell! Die. <laughs> I'm Destined Just to Die. Incredible. That game rules, dude. That game is sick. Oops. Is that <laughs> top 10 memes? It's up there. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, your bass belong to us. Highway to a Forbidden Place? Is that what it was? I, re- I made a song about it because I yeah, like that game so much. Level. Sounds like a Bon Jovi song. Uh, Fuck you. Now that, uh, now that Microsoft is in charge, Blizzard has renegotiated uh, with NetEase to bring their games back to China. Uh, so oh yeah, get paid. Remember how like yeah. like yeah. they lost the deal yeah. or whatever, and then you couldn't play WoW in China. So. Yeah. So yeah, now all that stuff is coming back in the summer Payday. for Chinese players. Can you imagine if you were like a huge WoW guy in China and then they just took it away? Oh, Devastating. Be brutal. VPN. Yeah. That would suck. VPN. Oh, I suppose yeah. You'd yeah, just, yeah. You'd, you'd just have a VPN. There's some pain in the butt workarounds. Pain in the butt, but you, you could probably do it. If we had a current VPN sponsor, I would give you the <laughs> right now. But That's right. We don't. Have I think it's a little bit more complicated. On currently that front, running VPN. Yeah. Um, there. I'm going to try to summarize this. There's some really weird back and forth this week about Dead Space stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What is going on here? Here we go. What is going on, Blood? Fill <laughs> me in, dude. I thought they, they say it was in development and then canceled, and then they denied that it was ever. What is happening? So apparently the remake didn't hit sales expectations, as those horror games never do. Thanks, yeah. chat. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> they motive. should reasonably set Chad, expectations. You. Chad, you know True. I'm just trolling. I love you. So Motive <laughs> won't be continuing with another Dead Space game. Damn so, it. but initially, what happened was Jeff Grubb had reported uh, that they were working on a Dead Space 2 remake, in, and nothing uh, he says matters. EA yeah. canned it. Then EA came out and said that the story was invalid or whatever. Mm-hmm. Then um, Jason Schreier came out and said that they were basically they were there's a team that was like working on multiple concepts. Uh, for the next Dead Space. One of them was a Dead Space 2 remake, but the thing that they really wanted to make was a new Dead Space game. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like neither one of those were greenlit. So it's not that it was in production and was canned. It was mm-hmm. like they were trying to come up with the pitch yeah. to sell to the higher-ups, and none of that stuff Concept. made it through. That's so brutal. Um, so That is so brutal. Basically, there's still that small team that's working on pitches for the next big idea for motive while the rest of like nuts and bolt motive are working on the iron, iron man, man game yeah. and the battlefield game yeah so so they're eventually going to come with something probably won't be dead space but maybe could be if they get yeah. the pitch that will you know get ea i mean iron say, man and battlefield i'm hyped on those yeah um yeah it's just the worst it's one of the worst feelings when you see a movie like Pacific Rim Uprising and you love it to death and it just doesn't catch on, it doesn't do well enough, and then they just scrap the whole damn franchise. You know, this happens to all of us with so many things we love. Things get canceled and it's brutal when you're so invested in it and you love it. Yeah. And then the the future is and Dead Space gets canceled, and then Mirror's Edge gets canceled, yeah, and then Mirror's Edge gets canceled, and then Dead Space gets canceled, yeah. <laughs> so what you're saying is Dead Space and Mirror's Edge need to have a roguelite and a Metroidvania, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, Dead Space did get that sick light gun game, Extraction, mm-hmm. incredible game, one of the best light gun games there is, I swear. Yeah. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth soundtrack is 175 tracks spanning <sighs> seven CDs. <sighs> CDs. Or you can download no. and uh, get that digitally now. Well, you don't get everything digitally because only like the special edit gets more music. So got it. One one warning there, and second warning, just like they did with remake, not every track is available now. Period. No matter what version you bought, there's countless tracks that are not available yet. That will probably be available in the like plus version they did. They did that with remake. They had a remake soundtrack, then they did like the plus version that had like a whole bunch of extra tracks that they didn't include in the first one. They seem to be doing the same thing again. So it'll be more than 175 tracks for for rebirth. There's definitely more than 175. So yeah, we're going through that whole ordeal again. It's kind of a bummer, but it is that's Square Enix they're gonna make the money on that yeah. that music. What's your favorite version of Prelude, Damiani? 
Ooh, um, maybe the well, the OG, the bad Final Fantasy 14 1.0 vanilla. Mm-hmm. The that version was really? I really like that one. Sick. I never would have guessed that. In a Amazing. Years. Yeah, that awesome. was like one of the good things that come out of that was it still had a pretty yeah. good soundtrack, but Sick. yeah, that one is pretty bad. I want to go listen to that. Shoot. I really, I just really love sixteen because I was playing that first DLC. It's like oh. the, it's got like war vibe. I think it's like the war edit well, version or something. So the that, you know, yeah, like it's like, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a hybrid, but like the actual prelude, prelude that like is it? They have a really good version of it at near the end of the game. Um, <laughs> That uh, has like some like you know choir oz and ooze in it you know but yeah. it's very short is the problem. Choir, ooze and yeah. Love ooze and oz. Do you ooze remember when uh, our patrons didn't put prelude on the best? <laughs> I That's... do recall that. Wait, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then uh, shots put, uh, fired today. They didn't put uh, Dragon yeah. Quest Eight on the best yeah. battle theme. Shots yeah. fired. Final Fantasy X has probably like the most unique one because it's like only played in one spot in the beginning uh, with, with Titus when he's getting ready to go to the Blitzball game. It's kind of like a techno bop. I think it's pronounced like, Tolatro. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, thank you for the correction there. Um, and then like the Pixel Master version of Six is Prelude is pretty good. They, nice. like, I think they spent huh. the most budget on that version of it. Yeah. Awesome, Damiani. I love it. Uh, Don, roll this. I think this is the last thing you have to roll tonight. Could be wrong. A lot Don of hates rolls. rolling shit. <laughs> I'm gonna roll it. Roll for uh, me. So, Flight. Witchfire's been in early access for a bit, for a few months now. Yeah. Uh, it's getting its first uh, major update this week. The Ghost Galleon update. Uh-huh. Oh, of course. So hyped on this. Skull and Bones. Uh, with Ghost. Uh, so there's lots of new enemies. There's Val Kilmer. New weapons, new spells. Terrible movie. I- uh, plus, they're uh, now that people have you know put a few months into it, they've like yeah. uh, redesigned the progression system. I was just stuff. gonna say, Blood, wasn't there a huge revision for this game? That's what this is. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. I forgot this was in I, early access already. Yeah, I'm so hyped for this. Just visually, it looks incredible. Yeah. I'm a huge no painkiller sis. guy. No I sis. loved painkiller. Yeah. Um, and it feels like a lot of uh, shooters like this go the boomer shooter like retro route. I just love how like visually good it looks it yeah. looks so modern but it also has like those old school sensibilities yeah it's it's full on like creepy like <laughs> branches and mm-hmm. hex things and all of that going around uh yeah gnosis i'm trying to remember exactly what it was like it's sort of like a like a modifier on your experience level or whatever mm-hmm. so it's like you can get like yourself a little bit stronger without increasing the enemy difficulty hmm. Um, uh, this trailer yeah. is interesting to me because I can't remember the word it j- had a second ago, but it was just like redefined some keyword system. And I'm like, we're well, right, but I'm just like, your game's not even out yet. Yeah, and and like, like, your trailers are for the in crowd who's playing your game. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I mean, that's the, that's kind of the thing, right? It's like they're pitching the people that yeah, played yeah, the yeah. early access already and they're like, hey, it's different. Hop totally. back in. Yeah, Darkest Dungeon they're 2. They're in that, that phase where they're looking for feedback. Dude, Darkest Dungeon 2 at the finish line like changed some things that were essential to making it a better game. Like A lot of the early access diehard Darkest Dungeon players up until the bitter end were like, yo, these... Things do not work. I don't like this. I don't like this. And then, like, right near the end, they were like, okay, we're going to change this, this, this. Yeah. And I was like, okay, awesome. Witchfire so. gives me, like, modern heretic or hexen 100%. vibes, which I'm super into. Hell I'm yeah. going to hop into that eventually. Definitely. Hopefully. When's when's the full? The full? Do we know that? Full I date? don't think we know yet. Okay. I don't think they have a, a date set. Um, but we do know, or at least you two know, a little bit more about this avatar thing in Fortnite. What's going on? Tommyani's been playing more than me. How crazy is this? <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. Need, I need Huber. Although now I, I just have to revive six more people. Yeah, it's the hardest thing to do because like when you do queue with like random squad people, like they yeah. never stay by you. Dude, and, tonight like, we'll do it, Tommy. You get like ambushed too fast, so like you can't even like revive. And I like don't have enough gold to hire. Like you could hire NPCs to the fight with you, but I've only been able to like hire three. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, that one, and then you have to like kill so there's a list of quests on each page and you complete them you unlock the skin it, completing each individual task will give you a reward as well like an emote etc um but the skins are the big ones and you gotta 
you got to complete all the quests on each page. And so I'm on, there's two pages, one for the default core skin, the one for kind of like her avatar state or enhanced version. And then tomorrow, the classic avatar, the last airbender crew um, pass is dropping. So you can buy the skins right now for, for Zuko, for Katara and for Toph. Um, and they got like some extras with them, but a pass drops tomorrow where you can get like, Aang. you can get like, yeah. but, like not quite adult Aang, but not kidding. It's like, I don't know, like college age. Aang, <laughs> no. I guess I will call it. <laughs> and, and then the Aang's avatar state skin as well. And they like showed them writing like Appa. And I'm like, wait, what Dude, is that going to be get- like? A glider, like an so that's glider. already in there. That's, that, that's yeah. the one trying to get in the page okay. two for Cora. It's on there, but his uh, his stick is one of the things you you get there. And then like, um, but Appa, like I don't yeah. know if it's like limited time because the bending is in the game. You have water bending yeah, right now. It looks crazy. Fire, earth, air bending will be added tomorrow. And there's scrolls or myth, m- myth, mythic, mystic scrolls you pick up. Uh, there's a guaranteed dude. I don't know if you've seen it yet, Huber, but if you drop past the ice area, yeah. it's it's Aang frozen in ice with Appa. <laughs> like it's just like literally there. And That's there's a guaranteed sick. there's a guaranteed water bending scroll right there every time if you go. That's so awesome. So it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and he, they cool they do their crossovers like it's so, so cool. yeah. well. Yeah. It's, it's like so the really Turtles cool. one, they had like the full on yeah. hideout, like in the sewers. It was so cool. So cool. And Aang will get the riding the air ball emote. So that's like the one I really want because that one's like iconic as heck. Hell so yeah. yeah, that's that's dropping tomorrow apparently too. So more and more questing. Yeah, I got to play more to get all that Stream stuff. Stream it, dude. I'll join you. Um, I, the skin, I'm learning the pain of the skins though, because the, the three <laughs> I mentioned are pricey, very pricey V buck yeah. wise. Although Uh-oh. you can buy a two pack for Zuko yeah. and Katara, which is kind of funny <laughs> because <they're laughs> pairing them together, like inciting some ship wars there. Uh, you get like 800 V bucks off. So they're like, instead of 4,000, they're like 3,200 V bucks. So that's pretty pricey. Like 25 20, it's two, it's, bucks or something yeah, about. It's 2,000 per skin and they come with like their yeah. the like the destructing the whatever they what do they call like the the pickaxe weapon but their version yeah. of it and then they get like an emote yeah. and one other thing and yeah. it's like okay that's, that's quite that a that's how fortnite gets you now is their their battle passes are really generous they yes. give you so yeah. much for really cheap for an entire like three four month season but the shop exclusive crossovers are really where they get you. Like the turtles, everyone was like anticipating, oh, you'll just be able to buy a turtle and then swap them out with the colors. Uh, and it was like, no, you gotta buy like four different turtles. It's like, no. So a it's lot- It's like of, a prime resurgence pack in yeah. Warframe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a hundred bucks. Yeah. But even those, um, even those additional battle passes, Damiani, that you're talking about for like tomorrow, I think yeah. it's like a thousand, so it's like eight bucks, and you can like earn like well, a th- bunch of different. They were things. yeah, it was only like seven or eight bucks yeah, for the battle pass for Cora. I don't know how much the price will be tomorrow, but mm-hmm. yeah, that's I like that has most of the stuff I care about. Like exactly. I actually don't really need a Toph, Zuko, or Katara skin. Like yeah. having Aang and and Cora will be plenty for me. I usually I just, skip a lot of the shop exclusive yeah. stuff. I just need to know if Appa is just like limp for the event only, like the water, like the the elemental bending, or if it is the glider. You could freaking yeah. ride Appa as the glider. That's like yeah, a big hidden have, one. You need like, that, I, or is I it a bus that. skin? He's oh, so big. No. maybe that. No, I don't think they would. That'd be crazy that would be if they made the bus. The bus, yeah. <laughs> Jumping out of Appa, yeah. riding on top of Appa. That'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Very cool, Damiani. We gotta play. Do they pay Fortnite creative mode people in V Bucks? Or do they pay V-Bucks. you real money? I, I, I know they pay sure out a they lot pay of people. You in real but I don't money, know but... the details. Yeah. Um, cool. Huber, what can you tell me about this this Destiny Two update that people are freaking out about? What are the details? Destiny Two, the final shape. Uh, so there are n- n- finally new enemies, new enemy what? type. What? New enemy type in Destiny 2. In my Destiny? It happened. <laughs> I never thought it possible. No, certainly it's just a reskin no, of, they, of current enemy type. No, this is They a, just turn them black and there's white, There's like right? flying weird dragons with like sword gun arms. It looks crazy, actually. Yeah, it looks really cool. It only took them 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Um, what the fuck? <laughs> and then new powers. Uh, you can use like there's some, there's all this nitty gritty stuff which I am, admittedly am not tuned into. I do not have my finger on the pulse on Destiny right now. Tune. But uh, there's everyone's really excited because you can like combine powers now. They were saying you could throw like a stasis grenade and then use like flame to have like a combo. Like it, it's it's more about trying to break it actually they said like things will re-roll automatically now so you can get like these absurdly powerful abilities but again i'm not like fully tapped in but the things they are saying are encouraging finally new weapons new enemies like new enemy type is the biggest thing i mean that's something we've been saying they should be doing since destiny one exactly so like yeah nice yeah. Not like a taken or a corrupted form or whatever. <laughs> like a yeah. real new, actual, different behaving, different looking, different strategies enemy. Exactly. Like obviously the taken behave a little differently, but whatever. Trying Yeah, the new the new subclass. The exotic combination was the thing. Okay, yeah. So it's about like combining um, the the new subclass also that's huge. Like w- there isn't a new subclass in a minute. So having a new subclass and new weapon or a new enemy race. The enemy race is called the Dread. Look at that thing. Whoa! Isn't that cool? It's like this big flying dragon. Look it up. Robot the Dread. dragon camera yeah. body. Yeah. Uh, you can get exotics that gank two like subclass powers. So it's like taking the subclass powers and putting them in the exotic. So just a lot more crafting, and like could be yeah. cool. Could be cool. Fifty dollars, dude. Fifty dollars. The end of an era. We bought Lightfall. Fifty dollars. Yeah. I played it that one time with you, <laughs> yeah. and then I was like, I shouldn't have bought this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Riven's original composer is back for the remake, Robin. crafting uh, new music for that expanded world. That's cool. Yeah. That's Rand's brother, I think. Mm. Yeah. That's nice. I'm excited for the Riven remake. The Riv make. <laughs> the Riv make. <laughs> the Riv make. Um, yeah. I don't know. What can you say? Nice. It's time for Love and Respect. Love and Respect. Love and Respect. Love and Respect. Shit, sorry. <laughs> Shit, sorry. You were texting. Sorry. Someone was t- t- taxes. Had to answer the text. It's about yeah, taxes. I got a text that yeah. tax me. Shit, I was yeah. supposed to call the IRS. Yeah. <laughs> From Captain Don't mess with the tax man. Yeah. Or the gas man. How the hell do they know I got gas? How do they gas? know I got gas? <laughs> <laughs> These guys are pros. <laughs> From Captain Cobblepot. Cobblepot. Uh, greetings, get? allies. Kids pick a thing, and then they become obsessed with it for a good while. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Sometimes they their too. adult life. Yeah. Robots, Barbies, dinosaurs, trucks, Neopets, little people, superheroes, the grudge, you know. I was obsessed with everything Batman. Halloween, yeah. dress up, movies, games, comics, cups. Look at me now. What was your thing as a kid and has it carried into your adult life? Mm. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> this is the number one. And Batman, of course. But I think I even might have liked Turtles before Batman. Like, Turtles is one of my earliest. Mm-hmm. Loves, yeah. I would say. You know, I was like five years old. It really helped that I had a three year older brother, a brother that was three years older, because then I was like into that stuff even younger. Yeah. So I always talk about like him getting me into Mortal Kombat. Like I right. was so young Literally. for Mortal Kombat, but it was like, you know, I'm on his timetable because he's three years older. So it makes sense for him to have it, but like, you know. Little younger, so yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, my my totally. brother's six and a half, so it's like totally different. Like mm-hmm. we were in very different worlds. Yeah, my like when I was a kid of 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 this kind of fandom stuff, like I was very into X Men, Wolverine specifically, X-Men. and Rogue. I was very into Ghostbusters, um, Back to the Future. I remember really like it. My my fandom has kind of, you know, I'm I'm still a big appreciator. I was huge into Star Wars. Um, still a big appreciator of all the things that I used to love, but I wouldn't call myself, like, a huge fanatic for anything. Uh, I would say just more generally just movies and, and music and, and gaming, like, has has held on and not gotten weaker. But, like, the Tom specifics. Waits. <laughs> Tom Waits I got into in college. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you're a fan. Oh, yeah, big fan. 
I mean, Radiohead and Nine Inch Nails, I guess, are like, I still listen to them pretty nice. frequently. Nice. But, yeah. I'm trying Isn't to think that... if there's anything, yeah, like that I, I'm still I can obsessed remem- with. I can remember I taped old episodes of the Turtles cartoon on VHSs, and oh, I yeah. had like 10 of them with so many episodes, but then like... My mom needed to like tape some of her stuff, so she's like, "Hey, you know, tape over the years." So <laughs> like, took some of my turtles episodes. Oh man, That's funny. <laughs> I had tapes of The Simpsons and Muppet Babies. I would tape <laughs> those all the time. So funny. Yeah. Different times. Uh, hey, hey, anyone Power Rangers at all, or is that a little? Ooh. Dude, uh, I first, those are the first few seasons. I like the first two or three seasons. So I watched bummed. it when it was on, but I never. Like went crazy for it. There was like it like came out at a time when I was in that like little punk kid phase where I thought I was way too cool for Power Rangers, oh. so I would make fun of it. <laughs> so yeah. I, I yeah. totally it, that dark times had that dark reaction times. yeah to Power Rangers. <laughs> uh, like when at first when they first started showing on like Fox Kids or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. It was like UPN um, <laughs> or Fox or whichever. Yeah, it was Fox Kids. I remember for sure. But the the thing is, yeah, like when they first started showing it, I was like. This is really stupid. Like I, I remember this like it was yeah. just thinking it was terrible. Yeah. But because of the nature of TV, you would just watch it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's either that yeah. or the news. And then like Damiani was saying, it was like, oh yeah, those first few seasons. I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm kind of into this. Yeah. yeah I'm I kind of daydream dude. about Power Ranger stuff here and there. Goldar. Goldar <laughs> hype, my favorite, dude. Goldar's my favorite. I always like the henchman. I remember, you know, obviously I liked the Pink Ranger and then the, the whole Green Ranger saga yeah. and the White Ranger and all mm-hmm. that stuff. I remember that being kind of fun at the time. The, I don't care how edgy it is. I love the short film Power Slash Rangers. I don't give a shit. It's no. awesome. <laughs> I saw the original Power Rangers film in theaters. I remember that. I was like, yo, it's a, like a full movie and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, it was looks so different from the show. I was like, I was like, oh wow, this doesn't look. It looks so serious. I was like, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> also, shout out to Dragon Ball Z, exposing like an entire generation of humans to anime. Yeah. Like, mm. what even is anime? Dragon Ball Z opened that door I got to so many of anime us in the late nineties. Yeah, mm-hmm. Most, yeah was... mostly from the more adult, depressing side, like. Serial Experiments Lane and Cowboy Bebop and I think that was like one of the first times when it was seen as something different Mm -hmm. because there were definitely some that were like localized like Speed Racer or whatever Sailor Moon yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Sailor Moon was in that same space just another cartoon Dragon Ball where like it's like oh wait this is something like somehow it's different than a cartoon yeah um but Japanimation, so, as kids called it. So yeah, it, 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 you didn't have that for a good 10 years. Oh, my God. I, I remember, like, because you just didn't know back then, too. I remember getting so depressed because we used to hang out at my friend's house and watch Dragon Ball Z all the time. And they would always get to, like, a certain point in the story. And then the next episode, they would go all the way back to the beginning because they yeah. didn't have any more. That was all that they had. So it's like, next time on Dragon Ball Z, Goku's gonna fight Frieza. And it's like, psych, we're back at the Saiyan Saga. It's like, no! <laughs> and they back did that at the mercy over and over again. TV programming. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. Well, like, or I think about, like, well, here's maybe an ongoing, uh, I, I still love, like, Star Trek to this day or, you know, Silent Hill and that stuff. But, like, Star Trek Next Generation, like, mm. so many episodes <laughs> that I've seen, like, 14 times <laughs> just because they would play that one all the time. Yeah. yeah. And you just watch it because yeah. it's there, you know, <laughs> and in college, like, my comfort shit, like, Midnight TNG, you know, yeah. and then the X-Files at 1, you know? Like, yep. that was my every night. But then there's you know? episodes you've seen, like, maybe once. You're like, yeah. wait a second. Uh, <laughs> and they're, like, yeah. really good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Have I, have I told that story? The I mean, I was like, as a like kid, I was hugely into like Star Trek Next Generation, like oh my a, God, yeah. beyond obsessed with it. Uh, to point like friends or like wouldn't get references I was making because mm-hmm. they were like too hardcore inside with Star Trek, and they're like, "What are you talking about?" I'm like, "Okay, you don't know." Um, the, I, I, <laughs> well, I begged persists. my parents. I begged my parents to take me to uh, Star Trek convention. I didn't even know what it was a convention. Mm. I just thought it was like a coolest thing ever, and it was like happening nearby. And the thing was, it was obviously like very crowded and like huge line to get in. And my parents didn't want to do with that. So instead they like, were like, can we just like walk in and like buy him one thing and we're going to leave right away. And I was like, 
like happy I got something, but also like sad I couldn't get it because all these cool looking people were going in. I'm like, but I was like, also the little kids that are like, and all these, a lot of adults. So they're like, they're like, we, we, you cannot be alone here. And like, we don't, and like my parents kind of didn't want to like hang out there. So I was like, all right, fine, you know. But yeah, because I had like, I had a old, like some kind of like small TV. And it would just come. It was like one of the only stations that would like work with the antenna, yeah. and it would just come on very late at night. And like I like I would stay up late just to watch it and go to bed like right after. And that was like every weeknight for me for like years. It was just like watching that. I became like psychologically dependent <laughs> on TV program scheduling, uh, like and when they like I would I would become like because I you know suffered from pretty bad depression in my teens, and so like. It would become very important for me to like watch a next generation episode at like 11 p.m. Time, or midnight, yeah. yeah, at that time. So like if I would get there, you know, and like I'm like mentally depending on seeing Picard and then it's like a fucking infomercial or like an episode <laughs> of whatever, I would like get kind of se- like bummed out. <laughs> I would be like, "Oh man, and, like back then you had no recourse." Like that's Yeah. You know, they're not playing it. Mm-hmm. Like whatever. They used to have this double it was at midnight and twelve thirty in the morning. Two episodes of Batman animated series. Oh yeah, mm. back to back, like super late. And then they got rid of that. I was like, damn it. <laughs> now I just have. There's no. nothing cozier. Now you can stream it. You got the hard copies. Yeah, but yeah, back yeah. Then it was like, oh, there was nothing it. cozier than than like the blocks of TV. Mm-hmm. Like you get home from school. Tsunami height. Four p.m. Like UPN plays a Simpsons yeah. and then a Seinfeld. Yeah. Then you switch to Fox and they play a Simpsons <laughs> yeah. and then a Seinfeld. And then you switch to like whatever it was and they'll play Next Generation. And yep. then you switch to these guys and they play the X Files. It's just like so good. Ah, oh, so it magical. was so nice. Just every day. Yep. <laughs> You just knew which channel to go to. Back in our day, chat. Yeah, we're all so <laughs> old. Yeah, yeah, three to five. That was that was the time slot for the cartoons after school. Yeah. Um. Yeah. For for me, yeah, it's like obviously, like you're saying, like you know, into turtles quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, into birds, into dinosaurs, Love into birds. sharks, into video games. Yep. Uh, the one thing though that is kind of fascinating in a way to like kind of look back on my brain or whatever is like I was super 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 into He-Man Masters of the Universe oh. you know mm-hmm. and have like a ton of like the toys vehicles and castles and all of this stuff and some of those are worth money a lot of money y- my mom says that same kind of thing but not the way that I played with them <laughs> like, oh, they're okay. pretty beat up because that big there's purple, nothing sealed in a box. That purple rocky castle open out of box. So Bea and I saw it in a store for like three hundred bucks the other day. Yeah. So yeah, I have Snake Mountain. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like it's it's a it's it's between like how I took care of them and then how my mom has taken care of yeah. them since I've left home. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're covered in millipedes now. Yeah. <laughs> or something, but <laughs> but it's it, it's crazy because um, for all of the times that they have. Like tried to reboot that show and make a Netflix reboot thing and out. reissue oh, yeah. the toys, and like reboot. I've seen like them reissue the toys, like the ones that are like authentic, you know, like the yeah, the yeah, original yeah. ones, and like, but I'll just see them in Target and I would like look look through them. It's like cool, and, like and, that, and that's it. I'm good. I don't like I don't need to buy that and bring it back to my house. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, um, and yeah. So I've just like like the like really the latest thing. Well, they were still making toys after that, but like the latest thing media wise was like the movie, you know, with with Dolph Lundgren, oh my God, the live the action movie one. of Her Man. <laughs> but yeah, like I've never watched any of the other series or anything since then. Yeah, I would say I don't have like a fanatical, like obsessive kind of. That sounds shady. I'm not being shady, but like I don't have the kind of personality that like really stays into a thing for a super long time. I guess the closest thing, like I really like Mr. Sunday movies on YouTube. Like I, those guys are like really comforting for me and I like listening to their stuff. So I'll tune in every, every week for that, you know? And, uh, I mean, I've been into Warframe recently, but we'll (laughs) we'll see how long that goes, but I really like it. But yeah, so I've just never been that kind of person, but I guess I do have some, some, Things that I've loved my whole life like that, like TNG and stuff like that. Don, do you have a thing that you you had as a kid that you were obsessed with and now carries over? 
Uh, the dinosaur thing carries over a little bit, mm-hmm. yeah. but uh, when I was a kid, I was like Dino scientifically uh, obsessed Dino with dinosaurs. Lords? You know, I was, I was obsessed thing? with like the science That's side of them and the facts and all that stuff. And now I'm more like obsessed with the fantastical as- aspect of them. You know, kind of the opposite of what I liked when I was a kid about dinosaurs. <laughs> but, Did you uh, have those discover? discover books about dinosaurs as a kid uh, or whatever the like white ones that had the like dk oh no i didn't i don't think those. i had to I discover ones oh, i had like so good i just remember when i was like i was pretty young like six or something i was like so obsessed and i like study all the facts about same, dinosaurs same. and uh, i remember going with my mom to work sometimes i go with her uh and and i'd prepare these like pages long tests quizzes for her co oh. <laughs> and i'd like present them to these like long like loose leaf sheets of like double-sided questionnaires i'd prepared for the so they really loved when i'd show up as you can imagine <laughs> it was like, <laughs> like super hyperactive kid. six-year-old with like vol- voluminous uh dinosaur quizzes <laughs> yeah i had a series of books that were like from the book fair or whatever at school. They were like hardcover, yeah, glossy, uh, and they're like different, like past, um, like kind of pastels, but like, but each one was like of a specific dinosaur. It's like, so here's the Stegosaurus book, and here's the Triceratops book. Um, and then I also had like, um, this was kind of a big thing when I was a kid. There were like, there were like these these paperback books that you could get, but then they had like a bunch of blank spaces for stickers. Oh yeah. So you would collect the stickers like you would collect cards. Like uh, zoo cards. books or the No, not magazines? the zoo books. I had oh, zoo books those too. Those are great too, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I still got some of the, the zoo books from when I was what? a kid. Oh. Yeah, because those things are fantastic. Those were great. Well, like when they like do the like s- the blowouts where they're like, okay, here's, here's the like cross section of the skin and the fat and the muscles. Of the animal uh, and like all of the, yeah. I had I had a series. Of, I don't know if it was the DK thing. What what am I thinking of? The dis, is it Discover Kids? There's Whatever. definitely a Discovery Kids. Yeah, it's like thing, the yeah. red DK logo, and they had like the encyclopedia thing that with the cool intro video. Anyway, but uh, there were also these white. They were like cross section books, mm. and they, I had one about castles and one about sh- pirate ships. And like big oh, ships, yeah, like galleon I those. ships. I had those those cross section yeah. books were so tight. <laughs> so sick. And it, you reminded me of that with the like fat and skin and all that. Yeah. Damn. Where are my men? Where is my <laughs> ship? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> From Alexander Zirinov. Hello, allies. What game will you fully, uh, full heartedly recommend to others? But never play yourself. <laughs> uh, for me, it's Final Fantasy XIV. I've tried playing uh, the Elder Scrolls Online, and my immersion was constantly broken by running and jumping players, which led me to a conclusion that MMOs are just not for me. But Damiani has convinced me that Final Fantasy XIV is absolutely incredible, and I have no hesitations about recommending it to others without firsthand experience. That's a good pick. Although apparently I've played 155 hours of XIV. Um... Yeah, I mean, the one that I put down, and like it's only rereading the questions where I'm like, oh, I guess the answer I have is not exactly accurate because I would play it, I just haven't played it. Yeah. Is uh, the, the Yakuza series. Oh, you know, like yeah. I, I dabbled, a good one. I'm dabbled in one. Yakuza Zero, but I yeah. haven't gotten that deep. Mm. Uh, but it's like, yeah, if anyone wants a recommendation, it's like, heck yes, play these games. You know. Having, uh, having the job that yeah. we have, like, I find myself playing a lot of games that I wouldn't otherwise play. Yeah. Um, which means, you know, and I, I don't really have any compunction against stopping playing a game. Uh, and, like, you know, various games that I can see, like, okay, yeah, this is a really well-made game that just is not my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. And so, like, any number of those, I'd be oh, like, yeah. hell yeah, play well, that. Yeah, I mean, like, like, like Cataclysmo. It's like, I can appreciate what the heck yeah, they're yeah. doing in that game. Or, like, 16 Probably wasn't for me, but, like, you guys into. love it. And I'm like, yeah, chill. See Talos it. Principle. Oh. <laughs> Huber sat down at my work computer, bef- like, between the BAFTA <laughs> thing and this. Talos just Principle started Talos Principle 2 on my computer, <laughs> on my Steam. <laughs> <laughs> and he just like commented on my like completions and stuff. 100% across the board, baby. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and, then, and then just like left it running. And I was like, Huber, what are you doing? 
I think it's intense that Telus Principle says stop game instead of exit game in the menu. Ah. Uh, stop game. Stop game. <laughs> it's kind of intense. I've never seen that before. Uh, <laughs> it makes. I, I want to say it makes sense in the context. Yeah. It sort of does, but whatever. Yeah, Telus Principle. Those games are so good. Is the one. I love them. Damiani. Uh, Bellatro. Oh, come on. You I'm sack kidding. of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, Damiani ass. Ready to go. Oh, oh, boy. Piece of garb. Oh. That was very Damiani. I love that. Don, you have one? No, I can't think of one right now. Okay. Yeah, you Don don't want to stab us in the heart like Damiani. <laughs> All right. From Snake. <laughs> but it's too late. You give love a bad name. No one likes that song. <laughs> From Snake, Allies. Uh, do you Snake. remember when Bravia TVs had PS Now built what in? The the TV? The, so, Bravia is the best we TV. Were just talk, was that on this? I think so. Did we talk about it today? I think that was during the BAFTAs. <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> We were talking it's, about these TVs earlier. Uh, it started around 2013 and ended, as far as the internet tells me, in August 2017. Oh. Why should Xbox Cloud Gaming and Samsung TV's gaming hub be any different? Uh, if we compare the time of Bravia TVs and PS3 games to today, a lot has changed. But were the games and or the service the problem, or is the real challenge getting people to actually use it? Is that still true today? What do you think? Is the massive library of Xbox Cloud uh, gaming the attraction that solves all the problems of 2013, or what could drive the number of users to use gaming via the smart TVs? I I definitely have always viewed stuff like that as like a fun bonus, not a reason to go and buy one of these products. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? Like I've never been like, let me get a Bravia so I can play PlayStation stuff. And yeah. I mean, a big part of that is because I've always had all the consoles. But like, to me, it's like, a fun bonus thing. And I, I do wonder if people like are bored at home and flip through their Samsung and be like, oh, I could play these Xbox games. Like, I'm sure that there's some percentage of people where that's the thing. And like I do think like I think it's really good financially, like, you know, it's expensive to play games and it's especially expensive to buy a big good TV, mm-hmm. a big Xbox, and subscribe to Game Pass. So if you can get three birds with one stone yeah. effectively, like Well, you still have to subscribe, but yeah. Well, sure. Okay. Two birds with one stone then. Like and if it runs well, like I think that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, like for me it's always been a bonus feature that I've never really sought out. Like and when I got my Apple TV, I put some Apple arcade games on it and I synced a controller or whatever and like I thought the experience was clunky and terrible and so I didn't use it anymore, you know. But like if right. if the Samsung experience is good. Yeah, that's that's the thing with, it actually is. with some of these I, it's like you have one bad day and it could just turn yeah. you off. Turn entirely. you off forever, yeah. yeah. I uh worked on a thing for the game awards that was Oh yeah, they showcased it. Right. They showcased it and and I just got to like play it and I was like, this is this is good. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> this is good. I've used xCloud on my phone to play Grounded, and it worked very, very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With the Rishi or Kishi yeah. or whatever, the Razer. Rikishi. The controller thing? Whatever. R- Rikishi's a wrestler. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember what it's called. But um, that worked great. Yeah. So, and Don't then. Don't you, you messed around with that a little bit after you moved or something? I mean, I have a, a Samsung with it, but I don't use it at all. Like the, I don't use the gaming hub at all. Um, even like trying to like use Twitch, like just to watch on it, it's like a terrible experience. Yeah. Like the only, mm. it's like the only good thing these things do well are like the just the streaming apps. Like they they actually have some nice features on there, kind of like your phone, the phone apps do, or you know, it it like like not just the sync stuff, but like it like like logs you like when you hit the app it is like takes you to like where you were in like the latest like video you're watching so you have to like go through that whereas like the one that doesn't though is like prime prime video sucks they're like their smart tv app like it fakes you out like it's going to resume right away from like where you were watching your like latest video and it's like oh no when you actually like hit anything like it looks like it's frozen you hit something it's like we're going to get you back to the profile screen you got to log back into your pro not log in like hey click your profile Mm. then you're gonna have to find your like like latest viewed list and it's like oh my like you fix this but netflix and uh um 
Netflix on there is actually really good. And well, they do the I, bum, Oh, bum, yeah. Bum. So I hate the barriers to entry that often happen with like Roku TVs or Samsung and whatever, where it's like either it's just laggy, like it doesn't yeah. have a good processor or enough RAM to actually do what it's trying to do. Or, yeah, it has all these like log into your Samsung account, log into your blah, blah, blah account, right. and we're going to log you out every other day. And it's just like, oh, my God. Like that to me is like. I will like I bought the Apple yeah, TV, the TV because you should like almost uh, never have you should to never have to do, yeah. and I bought Apple TV because I had a Chromecast for so many years and still have a couple in the bedroom in the office or whatever but like I got sick of the Wi-Fi like dipping the quality mm -hmm. a lot of the time uh, yeah. so like I wanted a hard wire because I'm like I have good internet it's just because this thing is behind the TV like so the Apple TV I plug it in to an Ethernet cable. Yeah. And it's just like 4K all day, baby. Heck yeah. Yeah. And like my, that to me is really important. Mine's plugged into an Ethernet too. Yeah. With like a TV, a, you can. So that yeah. that stuff is better. Yeah. It was easy to set up the accounts real quick. Like the, they just they are thing you just scan with your your phone oh, okay. and then like is, if you were logged in on your app already, just verified immediately and like it just signed you in. I was like, oh, that that's what yeah, that's why I forgot. That was like really sick that that's they did good. that. But adding new things like if it's not already on there, the app you have to download. Like that is a little mm. like the firmware is like a little chunky when it's trying to handle that. Like wait, you want little something that's not switchy. on this list here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Samsung's gaming hub is is really interesting. It's I definitely don't think it's anywhere close to being on the way out yet. Because <coughs> bring 3D TVs back for Don. They just uh, he's got a whole storage room of them. They no, they had uh they just took, like Aren't a couple months ago in. announced that it was <laughs> top men. They put a uh, gaming hub onto Galaxy phones as well. Oh okay. Um, oh, I just ditched my Galaxy phone, but. Um, but, uh, yeah, and it, they also, they don't just have Xbox, they have, uh, GeForce Now, they have Amazon Luna, they have Atomic, uh, which I don't even know, really, and Stream Arcade, which are, is a smaller one as well, and Black, Black Nut Cloud Gaming, which I don't Black really know Thorn. either. Black Nut? Black Nut, yeah. All right. Uh, but yeah, so it, it, I'm curious to, like, what the heck is Samsung's business model on that stuff right like is, are, is xbox paying them a bunch of money i think it's just that on their phone or or, or yeah, tv i, I think just being associated around, with gaming or? at all has really yeah. helped samsung like there was a time when it just became the like de facto go-to hd tv for people everyone's right. like gotta get that samsung yeah so i think just leaning into that is good optics now it's like samsung or lg uh, usually. Yep. yep yeah and so. i think um yeah, the other the other big part with the gaming hub too. I don't know if you got to see this when you were checking it out. Is like they have their own thing that sort of connects it all together. Hmm. And so, like, if you're logged into these different services, you can search for a game, and it can tell you if you have that game on any of your subscriptions. Nice. That's what I was gonna say. Is like I could see these, like a third, fourth party kind of almost. Uh, I could see a service like this being valuable for that, where it's like, it's the silver bullet that's just combining everything and taking stuff from all the things you subscribe to and just giving it to right. you. Right, because like if Atomic just like added The Witcher 2 this week or right. something, like I wouldn't know. Right. You know? And But if you have a Samsung gaming hub or whatever, like Apple TV hub, just shows you stuff from all the different services that you yeah. use. And then if you're subscribing to these things, then it's like, okay, cool. That's another like 20 bucks. I don't have to pay if right. I'm looking to pay, play that right now. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. It's not without its utility for sure. <sighs> we will see. All right. It is time for bets. This week's bets. Uh, next week, we're getting that second DLC for Final Fantasy 16. Primed. The Rising Tide. I'm ready. With Leviathan. Oh, Find out so why he was missing in action that whole time. We will. Busy. Uh, He's busy. Yeah. He was Got busy. other stuff to do. Off world. Yeah. Didn't need to worry Captain about Marvel all those style. crystals yeah, getting yeah, blown yeah, up. The universe is a big place. Earth isn't the only planet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, um, that is, uh, unfortunately, like, as happens with many console DLCs, not a thing that we can get early. Yeah. So, when that releases next week, I'm gonna look at that store page, and I wanna know how many gigabytes that expansion will be, as listed on the PlayStation Store page. Isla, how many gigs? Uh, you're not gonna give the context? 
I mean, I gave you the context. The context for the viewers is that Echoes of the Fallen is 8.47 gigabytes, and the main game is 95.86 gigabytes. We had the context. I thought it was only fair. I said 10.4. 10.4. Googie Fruits. Googie Fruits. Huber, Stealthy Centipede. 16 for 16. Cute. Ooh, 16. Cute. Nice. Might be a little too big. Damiani. I was going to say 16. Well, good thing we're not teams anymore because I also picked 16. Oh. <laughs> nice, nice. Pompous so Shocker Spaniel also 14. going 16. Huh? Should have said 14. That would have sapped Damiani of his strength. Don, the fashionable manatee, what do you, would you I say? I went a little high this time. Too high, maybe. 28.8. They're going to have to have Woo! some big movies. 28.8. 28. 28. 28. Like it's it. going to be big. Girl. I think it'll be big. I don't know if it'll be that big, but it'll definitely be big. What's the optimistic rack? Gabby. 10? 10. 10, 10, 10. You point forward me. Nice. Ten, ten. And then ten, ten, ten. for me, the effervescent hippopotamus, I want 15.67. Oh, he snaked you. How does he do it? <laughs> Every freaking time, how does he do it? That one's dirty. I don't know. I just picked a random number. Oh, uh, you knew they were going to pick I did not know. Sure. You peered beyond the veil. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, last week's bet was about Children of the Sun. Uh, oh, yeah. Which we just talked about earlier. Might as well be walking, walking on a... <laughs> <laughs> I have to pee so bad. Uh, last week I asked how many times uh, we would see a bullet connect when a with bullet. a target in the launch trailer. Wait, what is it? When the bullet... Something, something. When the bullet hits the bone. <laughs> when the bullet hits the bone. Okay. Ick. So as you maybe noticed in those trailers earlier when we were playing that footage, it is very distinct. There is a very Happens large a burst of blood and neon that happens. Bone and sinew. <laughs> and gas tanks and whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So for the number of targets, Huber bet 11. Damiani bet 21. Isla bet 13. Don bet seven. Oh, I'm boxed in on this one, I remember. Yeah, yeah that's right. We grew Gabby <laughs> went 14. Boxed, I'm boxed in hard. And I bet nine. Ah, oh, dude. The so, answer in that launch trailer, they hit 14 targets. Gabby sniped Gabby it. Said. Gabby. Gabby sniped Night. it. Woo. Nice, Gabby. I'm out of the game. <laughs> Bringing the scores to Stealthy Centipede, six. Effer effervescent Hippopotamus, four. <laughs> and Optimistic Rat, two. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Get it. Let me tell you about patreon.com slash easy allies. Uh, if you enjoy watching the show week after week uh, and it is worth your time, uh, please consider whether it might also be worth your money. Uh, everything uh, that we do here is funded by wonderful viewers just like yourself uh, who have kept this thing going for more than eight years now. Crazy. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so thank you to everyone out there who is a patron. Uh, so you can give to us uh, on patreon.com slash easy allies. You can give to us in a one-time link that's uh, under the Twitch page or in the description on the YouTube video, uh, or uh, you can sub on Twitch and you can do that. But Patreon is the most effective way, uh, and uh, $5 patrons uh, get this podcast early. Uh, they get it ad-free. They get bonus Love and Respect questions. They get to submit to Love and Respect. So get in there. Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, that's when that, that, that post is open for you to put your questions in. So check that out. Get in there. Ask questions. Uh, and then uh, you also get to get into our Discord uh, so you can talk with other people in the community. You can check out food photos. You can talk about games. You can check out the, the news and start checking out and talking about the news with other people before we start talking about it. All that good stuff. So fun. Uh, and they just Discord. started voting on that new top 10 this week. Woo! Uh, so good Which stuff there. Which is... Which is going out of my head right this moment. I don't remember. <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember. Right now. Supers. Supers. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, Fighting that's game right. supers. That's right. And I think they said fatalities do count. 
So yes. Oh, oh, it is. Yes. yes, dude. Classic Sub Zero head rip. <laughs> spine taking the spine. Love out, it. Dude. Love they, it. They they, they will tell you what the real rules are if you go in the Discord. <laughs> yeah. Uh, There's rules probably. But uh, twenty five dollar and up uh, patrons are our producer tiers, uh, so they get recognized on various levels. Uh, and our platinum producers get a shout out on this podcast each and every week. And this month's shout outs go to Javawabs, El Thanis, Raymond Wheeler the Third, and Forever Ender. Shout out! Shout out! Shout out! It does sound so weird without Greg the Dark Knight. Greg the Dark Knight. <laughs> yeah. It does. Love you, Dark Knight. All right, uh, not a whole lot to promote at the moment, uh, other than we just did the reactions to the BAFTA Game Awards 2024. Yeah. Check it out. It was a really nice show. Yeah. I had a nice time. It was nice. Reacting to it. Yeah, that was nice. Uh, and then uh, Stream Team is going to be on Tuesday for the next group stream. <laughs> Uh, so that is another thing. If you become a ten dollar patron, you can get in there and suggest games and vote on those. Once Playing a month. Uh, Bellagio with Damiani. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just seeding that. There. So uh, Gabby, get on that mic because you get to shout out anything or anyone, anything that's on your mind. Uh, you get the final word and you get to sign off with your trademark. Sign off. As soon as I get this, I always forget everything that was talked about. Same. The <laughs> um, give someone a shout out. Give someone a shout out. Uh, shout out to books. Nice. <laughs> I'm reading The Power Broker by Robert Caro right now, and it's very good. Uh, what's the next thing? The next thing is the final word. <laughs> the final word is... I don't know. <laughs> I truly don't remember anything we talked anything about. Anything you disagreed with, anything you want to reiterate, or anything that pops into your head. Um, when you guys were talking about things that you watched or consumed when you were young that you still like to this day, right? Here yeah. comes. Oh, boy. A uh, uh, series of unfortunate events for ah. me. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I thought you were going to troll on us for being old. Trademark oh, well, sign-off. You guys are, but... Okay, my trademark <laughs> sign-off. Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. Get the dream egg from the Moogle Chocobo Carnival to unlock the Master Assassin's robes for Noctis. <laughs> 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 Cult bad, you girl.